and I also welcome the industrial participants who are present here in the studio and uh, around uh, 10 different centers in uh, three different states have been connected. I welcome all the centers. In fact, uh, I'll not be inviting uh, the different uh, guests from these centers because uh, we are short of time uh, and uh, straight away I'll be starting this session. Now this course, in fact, uh, if we see uh, IC engines have been planned uh, earlier also and in fact Dr. Punia was the first to start this course that is the technical courses at this institute and uh, it's the second course in line from Dr. Punia that we are offering this and IC engines as you know this technology is undergoing a drastic change in different parts of the country and uh, the latest development you can see that France is the country which is thinking of banning the diesel engine from the next year onwards. It means it's putting excessive pressure on this type of technology. So that's why we thought of offering this course with what is the latest trends and what is the latest technology and what are the changes which are happening in this area. And in this contest, this course we are offering along with the uh, uh, industry and the industry is uh, that is Embassy's Technovations Private Limited Gurgaon and we have his expert, we have his owner, managing director Dr. D.S. Katri here and our institute has signed an MOU with this industry and in, uh, for collaborating with us is not only in offering these courses but in other research projects where this industry is helping our uh, students in taking up industrial projects in different areas at, in automobile sectors in Gurgaon and I'm very thankful to Dr. D.S. Khatri who is very much here and uh, he'll be some of the portion will be taken care of by uh, him and uh, Dr. Khatri as you know uh, I, I have got a just his brief biodata he has completed his masters in thermal engineering from Delhi College of Engineering Delhi and PhD from IIT Delhi and he's a visiting research fellow to a number of colleges in uh, UK and he has got a vast experience in his area. He has worked in Italy. He is right now, uh, I told you that uh, having his own firm and offering consultancy to different industry, automobile sector in Gurgaon. He was also the earlier technical head in Germany in one of the company and technical advisor to ESK Automotive. He is a founder director of, of this right now the present company of Embassy's Technovations and he has also guided not only the M ME projects but he has also guided PhD at IIT Delhi and has got number of patents to his credit. And coming to the department that uh, my department is offering these ICT courses in fact, we started this year earlier. I told you that Dr. Punya offered this ICNG last year. And this year we are offering a number of courses through ICT. And we have already offered two such courses, one in industrial automation and robotics in August and one in AutoCAD recently in November. And this the right now ICNG is especially on the special request of many uh, institutions we are offering. And we in pipeline are, there are three courses which we'll be offering through ICT that is advanced manufacturing methods in February and two courses we'll be offering in uh, March that is recent trends in automobile engineering and CAD using CATIA. Regarding this recent trends in automobile engineering in which we'll be offering in March again we'll be taking help of number of experts from uh, this area and we'll be also taking help of Dr. Khatri and there we'll be covering more different aspects leading to, uh, to the automobile technology. So not not taking much time now I'll in fact like to invite our uh, director Dr. M.P. Punya who's a well-known expertise in this area, well-known administrator, uh, the personality which the northern uh, region knows well and I now invite Dr. Punya to please briefly uh, give his talk on this occasion. Yeah, in fact, uh, just excuse me. Uh, now, before I invite Dr. Punia, I like to invite Dr. Khatri to throw some light on this five days program which we are offering on IC engine, so that at least you know what are the different contents which he'll be covering in these five 
days. Dr. Katri. Thanks, Professor Benvet, Dr. Punia, and Mr. Paula. And good morning to everyone, to all the centers which are connected through NITTR. The content of the present course, we are starting with the fundamentals of internal combustion engines. Then we are covering what are the basic needs of an internal combustion engines. And this I would like to start, <clears throat> you know, what is the best engines in the world available? That is our own body. And we will start and correlate the nature with the internal combustion engines. Like what we need, our basic requirement is air and any type of fuel, either we are taking carbohydrate, different proteins and all that and then we are blending both and then we are converting those into energy. Similarly, engine is also a th energy conversion machine which converts the chemical energy of the fuel into the mechanical energy. So these basics we will discuss and the mixture preparation technique which has been used for these engines that will be also elaborated. Like we will start with the carburetor which has been used since last 100 years, but the circumstances, the environmental protection forced the researchers to say goodbye to the carburetor. And why it has happened so, we will discuss, we will throw some light on that also. And who has replaced the carburetor? That is the injection system. More precisely, we can say it is the electronic fuel injection system technology which has been already playing a vital role in passenger cars and in two wheeler also is going to play a vital role maybe next few years. After the engine management system, you would like to have a demonstration about the engine management system concept, what type of sensors we are using, what type of actuators we are using and what is the control starting from the air intake till to the exhaust gases. This demonstration will brief you about the fundamentals of each and every sensor, what type of signals it is giving, what type of actuators we are using, like injector, whether it is peak hole type, it is saturated type, all these things we would like to discuss with you during the demonstration which will take place today afternoon. But tomorrow morning we will start with the combustion fundamentals where we will initiate in spark ignition engines, how the spark is initiated in diesel engines, what is the combustion fundamentals and what is the difference between petrol engine and diesel engines combustion strategy. After this, we will arrive what are the causes of the pollutant formation, why CO is formed, why hydrocarbons are formed, why NOx is formed and why particulate matter is formed. Because until and unless we don't understand the basic cause of formation, we cannot avoid it, we cannot control it. After understanding all this, we will also know what are the effect of these pollutants on the human body and on the nature, on the environment. These effects may be categorized as a local regional problems, this may be categorized as a global problems and country problems. So that will be also discussed, like for example, CO level increase in the air may cause the headache. Why headache? NOx results in asthmatic problem, it reduces the lungs capacity, why so? So all this will be discussed tomorrow morning. Then we will discuss the pollution is formed now, how to avoid it? emissions control technology for each and every pollutant will be discussed. Like how I can reduce CO emissions, 
how I can reduce hydrocarbon emissions, how we can reduce NOx and particulate matter. Not only this for pollutants, now automotive industry is forced to reduce the CO2 emissions also. Till now CO2 was not considered as a pollutant, but in Europe already a regulation has been passed according to which any vehicle cannot emit more than 120 gram of CO2 per kilometer. Today we are emitting around 160 to 180 gram per kilometer. It means there is a pressure on the automotive industry, on the researcher, on the academics, on the engineers, on the scientists, how to reduce the CO2 emissions. The byproduct of CO2 reduction will be also, we have to increase the fuel economy. Because in one kilometer, how much quantity of fuel I am consuming, that is producing the CO2. If I will consume less fuel, means less CO2 formation. Some emphasis will be also given, okay, I have the technology to reduce the emissions, but the technology is sustainable, the technology is economical viable, because in India, we cannot put a technology which cost maybe 1 lakh rupees. The engine cost is 1 lakh and the emissions control technology is also having the cost of 1 lakh rupees. So I cannot afford that. The country like India cannot afford that. So we will discuss those issues also. For example, to reduce the NOx, there are two concepts. One is the EGR, exhaust gas recirculation system. Another is urea addition in the exhaust system. Now different country, different reasons, they are adopting different type of technology. In India, now the choice is there. First, I should know what are the different technologies to reduce the NOx. Then I should understand the fundamentals of that. Then I should understand and evaluate which is more suitable for me, my country, which is more suitable for our environmental conditions, which is more suitable to our road and transport sector. Keeping driving behavior, keeping road conditions, keeping driving habits. Just giving an example, the BMW has launched the car here. We will understand those concepts also from the engine point of view that whenever that car is passing on the road, having the water of around one feet, engine damages. And that damage is called as hydrolocking. In Germany, in Japan, these people, they never face this problem. They say, sir, we have never faced this problem. Our car is one of the most wanted car in the world. But when that car, that technology is put on the Indian roads, it fails. It is a mercy. And the person who is spending 1 crore rupee on buying a car and he is standing on the road, you can just imagine what will happen. So we cannot get the transfer the technology. What is good in Germany may not be good in India. So that's why we will give the emphasis that what type of engine technology, what type of emissions control technology will be suitable for India. Another part like till now we were not controlling the particulate matters. Now the concept is coming diesel particulate filter. Okay, I can use the and I will give you an idea, you know, what is the cost of these systems? Because when we are talking about the technology, one DPF only, I am not talking about the technology, one DPF cost around 45,000 rupees. If I am putting in a car, you can just imagine, and it is a only DPF, not the system. The system itself costs around 2 lakhs rupees to control the particulate matter. So we have to see, to throw the idea, what is the cost of the technology, will provoke you. Can I identify a, another option, another technology which is cheaper, which is good for India. So that we have to discuss and we will try to energize your neurons during this training sessions. After that, tomorrow after lunch, again from 2 to 4, we will demonstrate you all the technology of emissions control. How the NOx is controlled by using EGR. We have bring a EGR valves. 
we have bought a ECU also and what are the parameters, how the lift is varying, we will try to display on the laptop and we will show you how this technology works and how this technology is integrated in the engines and how it is effective. Similarly, particulate matter technology that is a DPF, diesel particulate filter, I will show you that actual DPF which we have bought specially to show you and then how that technology is to be integrated in the vehicle and when the particulate matter is choked after some time, nobody is going to replace that because the cost is 50,000 rupees, 60,000 rupees because the driving force to a customer is the fuel economy. He is not bothered about the pollutant from the car. But government agency, environmental protection agency, they are bothered about the environments. So if the DPF is choked, what will happen? Customer may remove it and you may throw it. Then what is what should be done? So we have developed a technology which will be mounted on the DPF that is known as a active regeneration system. It means when the back pressure increases to a certain amount, appropriate quantity of fuel will be injected in the DPF and that will oxidize the all the particulate matter which is stored in the DPF. So that technology also we are going to display you. Next third day we are covering some aspect of the alternate fuels. Then we are getting an expert Mr. Ajay Kashyap for this. Again he has got his degree from USA and he is a very innovative entrepreneur. All the CNG buses in Delhi are fitted by green fuel company. So they will talk about the piping, about the pressure regulator and all these things. Then we have a session from how to reduce the friction from the internal combustion engines. That is from IIT Delhi. Professor R.K. Pandey is expert in that area. He will emphasize how we can improve the fuel economy by reducing the frictional losses. And next day, Professor Punia, Dr. Punia is taking about the basic performance of the engine, how we can enhance the performance. And Dr. Ramesh from IIT Chennai is talking about the he will talk about the sizing of the engine. Now the concept is I can keep one engine by doing the turbo charging or super charging, I can enhance the power power. That will be good by Dr. Ernest on the fourth day and on because in India the main problem is idling period is increasing day by day. So what is happening in the Delhi? 58% period of total during journey is spent on idling. Suppose I am running my car for two hours, almost one hour is going in a idling. You can just imagine if there are millions cars, one hour idling, that will result in million liters of fuel consumption. Million liters of fuel consumption during one day. And significant amount of pollutants, CUHC. The concept is during idling, engine should shut off. That is a hybrid. I can operate on the electric system and when I drive, I can operate the, with the internal combustion. So those are the things, all these issues will be addressed and then on the fifth day, we have the conclusions. And this is, uh, I think, uh, a brief about this internal combustion program, which is, uh, I appreciate that it is initiated by Dr. M.P. Punia. And this is the need of the hours that because engine and automotive, we should not understand that this is belongs to mechanical engineer or this belongs to electrical engineer. We have to change that thought. Any tech because why we are not able to you know come up with the technology? Because what we think it is a mechanical task, it is an electronic task, 
it is a electrical engineering task it is a metallurgy person task it is a rubber person task it is a chemical engineering task no automotive engineer is a blend of all engineering mechanical engineers cannot do anything only one mechanical electronics is required software is required hardware is required chemi chemistry is required rubber plastics fuel the starting point what is the fuel technology it is all chemical engineering what is cng compression ratio knocking the chemical expert is required so it is a blend so we have to come together all the discipline has to come together to develop a technology to develop a system and the iron combustion is a one technology which is capable to involve all the discipline in one area and with this i thanks and ittr and special thanks to professor mp punia to give us the opportunity to interact with you to share with you the emerging trend on the internal combustion engines and hope this course will be beneficial to all the participants thanks yeah thank you dr khatri in fact he has given us a good insight about this 5 uh, days program and i hope uh, your participant will be naturally benefited by the content which is delivered in this course and now i'll invite dr punia to share his thought for this course doctor and uh, good morning thank you professor benwit professor pabla professor sachan dr khatri participants at etv studio my team members at etv studio participants at different centers first of all on behalf of nita chandigarh i welcome you all I hope this five days program on internal combustion engine is a wonderful addition in the knowledge many many issues professor khatri was discussing there are four themes which we want from an engine which we have discussed one from a given size of engine we want maximum output or always our efforts are to reduce the size of the engine second one we want that noise of the engine should be minimum means comfort when when we are riding or a vehicle comfort should be maximum but for third one uh, it's exhaust emissions which are there it should be minimum and fourth one fuel consumption four major areas uh, first i am saying the size should be minimum fuel one it, it, it's noise it should be noise free ride should be very comfortable third one we are saying that exhaust emission should be minimum fourth one fuel consumption should be minimum those major areas are there in india if you see we are third largest country uh, which means total number of vehicles which are being produced in the, in the world out of that if i am comparing we are third largest manufacturer of vehicles the amount of fuel which you are consuming in india it is around 2% of the world's consumption americans are using around 50% total petroleum products which world is using out of that only 2% we are using they are using 50% even if you are using 2% still we are saying our environmental conditions are very bad very bad if you go to bangalore as he was discussing about the particulate matters 50% people in bangalore are asthmatic and main reason is the particulate matters which is coming mainly due to sulfur contents which are available in diesel the bangalore has become asthma capital of india same is the situation of delhi delhi particularly we are suffering from fog that is the, the the chemical which is floating in in, in atmosphere it is in more or less it is visible just like a fog but it is smoke and and any any trace d may be just like bopal trace d it is very near if and uh, i think we are unable to predict that type of situation may come population of delhi is increasing by 4% every year and number of vehicles are increasing by 24% i'm saying population of delhi is increasing by 4% number of vehicles every year is increasing by 24% where will be parking them how will be managing them as already is saying that idling time is 58% idling time means when we are waiting on the red lights that time engine is in switch on position but we are waiting on the red light no output we are getting it is not moving at all and it is happening we are having metro we are having many many bridges we are having everything we have every effort we have, we have we have done but still this type of situation is coming so because the, the, the in every subject the problems are many many 
trends or the, the requirement of the industry, the latest technologies, latest knowledge to the trends has to be. If I'm comparing 20 years back, the teaching of internal combustion engine and today's uh, teaching of internal combustion engines, it is something different. It's very, very different. The type of controls which we're discussing about or exhaust emission control or even time is um, coming into picture. The teaching is becoming difficult for, for everyone. So the, the area which I'll be t discussing, I'm, I may not be touching in this inaugural session, um, how the central combustion engine has to be taught, but at least how teaching can be uh, made interesting. So the students can take interest into this one because now complications are increasing. However, they are having many, many sources are also there. Long back when myself and Dr. Khatri were doing PhD at IIT Delhi, that time, even even having these type of programs and uh, attending these type of programs, taking knowledge through these type of programs, it was just impossible. It was just dream. Even even this internet, the Google, the, the SAE journal, getting them, it was very, very difficult. So literature was not available, books were not available, these technologies were not available. So that time there was no guidance. At this particular juncture, we people are very lucky that people like Dr. Khatri are available with us who can um, interact with us and who can share their knowledge which they are facing, the, which they are going through in the industries. So this program which we have, we have, we have framed, um, uh, I'll be extending my sincere thanks to Professor Benwet and Professor Pabla that they have taken a lot of pain. And in this five days program, what they have planned, that industry should be there, the, the R&D organization, IIT should be there and we people who can deal the fundamentals of the subject, industry people will be dealing that what exactly industries are doing in the combustion engine and IIT people they will be telling us that what research is going on. So it's a combination, it's, it's, it's a rare combination where fundamentals, where research part and, in, and the, the application part is being covered in, in five days. So I hope that with the help of Dr. Khatri and our mechanical engineering department, it will be a wonderful um, gain in our knowledge. Just the Indian situation, if you see, and particularly higher education, if I'm seeing, in higher education, every day, every day, 5,000 students are added into higher education. When I'm saying higher education means education, which is after 12th. After 12th, the education which we are imparting, that is higher education. It's a huge country, huge population base. We are second largest country um, as far as population is concerned. Our population is around 1.21 billion after, after China, which they are having 1.35 billion. After that one, we are, we are the largest country in population. 5,000 students are adding um, every day. Nine new institutes are coming up every day. At present, we are having around 42,000 colleges in India. More than 700 universities we are having. And every day, nine more are being added. So you can imagine how many students, how many institutes are being added into this system. And our gross enrollment ratio still is only 22%. Meaning of this one is, suppose 100 students have passed in 12th class examination. Out of those 100, only 22 are entering into higher education. When I'm saying higher education, it is not only engineering education. Every type of education which is being imparted in the colleges. So it is only 22%. 78% still they are not getting the opportunity. So in time to come, and from the, by the efforts of the government of India, this 22% has to be increased by 38% end of this five-year plan. So use use possibilities, severe possibilities for, for, for expansion of this higher education is in time to come. At present, around around 25 million students are studying in higher education. 25 million means aapke adai crore bachche higher education mein padre. It is more than, means 1.5 times the population of Australia. These many students are passing every year. And number of institutes, I'm saying 42,000. So this tra traditional class teaching, which earlier we had, students were sitting, teacher was there, and class was teacher-centric class. Teacher was dominating. Those type of scenes were there. But now number of students are increasing. The, 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 the conventional concepts of teaching which we had, now it is not working. Now in NITs, if you see, long back, the class size was 40 students. Now class size is more than 120 students. Handling 120 students with conventional methods, it is becoming quite difficult also. And countries facing serious problems of teachers. We are having a huge shortage of teachers. So the class management, the, 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 the number of students to whom we let to uh, touch, that, that number is increasing. Even today's program, if you see, I think 10 centers are connected. Like three, four more will be connected. On and average, if 20 teachers are sitting at one place, so around 300 students, 300 teachers will be covering through this program. So this size of classrooms are coming up. Managing these type of these size of classrooms, again, it is becoming 
a difficult task for the teachers. This is the smart classroom. The, the con conventional classrooms I have shown you, this is tra traditional classrooms which we were using. Now, this is the classroom. If you go on MIT website, their, their videos, if you see, the class size is of 10,000 students. If you go to Bits Pilani, class size is 1,000 students. NIT Jaipur, if you see, most of the classrooms which they are um, um, uh, now, now constructing, it is of the class size of 500 students. So, these type of classrooms is the, the, the modern trend, in fact. Conventional automobiles which we were having, this was conventional automobile. Just, just we were having a, 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 a boiler where steam was getting generated, the steam was going on in the cylinders, it was forcing the piston. And, and, and the, the thermal efficiency of this type of engine was only 2 to 3 percent no controls, no mechanism, nothing was there. So even teaching of this type of mechanism was easier as compared to this one, as compared to this one. If I'm going to today's automobile, where teaching by teachers has to be, how many controls are there? Lot of, lot of micro, many microprocessors, even they are controlling the, the, the fuel supply, fuel injection, and the, the input from the atmosphere, the pressure, temperature, the throttle position, everything according to that one, even smallest drop of the fuel is getting controlled by microprocessor. Even through exhaust what is coming, as Dr. Khatri was saying, now not only CO, not only oxides of nitrogen, not only unburnt hydrocarbons, even CO2 is becoming a problem because it is affecting our, our temperature of the environment, which is we are saying global warming is taking place. And this century, this 21st century, it is hoped that temperature of earth will be increasing by 5 degrees Celsius. So normal temperature in Rajasthan, if you go, normal temperature in the month of May, it is 48, 49. If you add 5 degrees Celsius into that one, the temperature will become 54 degrees Celsius. How someone will survive at 54? How, how plantation, how agriculture, how we'll be doing? So it is, it, it is, it will be a very tough time if we won't be controlling the CO2. I'm saying we are consuming only 2% of the petroleum products, but CO2 emission of India is highest. It is largest in the world. So whatever impact will be coming, severe impact will be coming, that will be coming India only. It is hoped that during this 21st century, even the, the sea level will be increasing by 75 centimeter. If it will be rising by 75 centimeter, then a lot of water will be coming on earth. The cities like Bombay or some of the cities in Gujarat, they'll uh, Venice, in fact, no, no cities will be available, which is very near to the sea. So situation in time to come is becoming quite grim. And if we won't be controlling now, the situation will be very, very difficult where no one can control. So I'm saying teaching modern automobile, we need modern technology, modern tools, modern techniques, my city facilities will have to have so that we can do justice with these friends. Even today's the, the, the available facilities with the students which are there. Long back, only teacher was the source of knowledge. Now, many, many areas are there, many, many sources are there where, from where students are getting the information. Suppose today I have started to teach fundamentals of ICE engines. In first lecture, I'm teaching. Next day, when I'm entering into the class where I'm facing 125, class, uh, 125 students, related to that topic, many, many new things they, they have studied through Google and they'll be coming in the class if I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared as a teacher. Students won't permit me to stand in front of them. So teachers has to be prepared. Otherwise, doing justice with, with the students, it's very difficult. So it is being said, this Nobel Prize winner in 1993, Robert is saying, today's class, it's very difficult to find out that who is teacher. Teacher is dominating or students are dominating. Out of students and teacher, if I'm comparing who is teacher, it's very difficult to find because source of knowledge, source of information which students are having, that is huge. And the, the, the level of teacher and level of strength is certainly different, undoubtedly. The, the, the teacher is boiling at different temperature, strength is boiling at different temperature. Means they, 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 are, they are receiving the information from the teachers. So level of the teacher is higher, level of the teacher strength is lower. So first of all, the quality of a good teacher, he let to reach up to the level of the strength and at that level he should be able to deliver. Now both the levels, the, 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 the boiling temperature of, of, of teacher and boiling temperature of strengths, which is at a lower, I'm saying both the temperature should become same, boiling temperature should become same. It should be just like sublimation situation. Sublimation means just, just from, from solid to the, the, the vapor, it is being converted at same temperature, it is getting converted. So the sublimation type situation should be that both teacher and both students should come at one, one particular level 
and then exchange of knowledge has to be then only the controlling of the students and and the, the utility of the teacher can be proved if you are teacher is at a very high level students at art are at a very low level the, the 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 synchronization is very very difficult so first suggestion to the teachers from my side is please come to the level of the students if you want to manage the class of 120 students management will be possible only if we are always moving if you are always floating at the level of the students so this this in the history the, the role of the teacher and today's uh, teachers role it is very very difficult teachers are passing through a very tough time where quality of students the resources with the students which they are having it is much more so the role of teacher is becoming important even situation of uh, teacher is becoming something very different so most talented students we people are facing so certainly the level of teachers should continuously grow they should be the long life learner life learners they should be then only they can survive in front of the students so uh, classroom management when i'm saying meaning of the classroom management is whatever i'm teaching that should be received by the students whatever knowledge i'm i'm extending to the students that should be received by the students that is termed as classroom management main jo padha raha hu mere paas jo contents hai main jo deliver kar raha hu usko students receive kar paaye achhi tarah se receive kar paaye they should feel satisfied they should feel that we are gaining something so if that type of situation we are able to create that is termed as classroom management but most of the time what is happening most of the times the observations which we people are having students are not taking interest in the classes they are just like sleeping they are having the mobiles so they are having um, um, another type of books which may not be related to your subjects they are busy in those areas so the classroom can become interesting these type of situation should not be and it will it will not be if we people are prepared and we are working at the level of the students even lot of indiscipline is also being observed fighting within teachers and students lot of unrest even related to marks related to results indiscipline activities inside the class is being also observed it means there is a severe gap between the way we people are teaching and the way it is being received and it is also being said that teachers are not taking their job seriously if they are taking their job seriously these type of situations the, the unrest or indiscipline which is being observed it won't be it won't be so teachers should also be very very serious if they won't be serious they'll be vanished and teacher agar aapko yahan india mein nahi milenge kami rahegi to china se aa jayenge aapke jo hai us se aa jayenge someone will be teaching to indian friends because lot of hope from these friends whole world is looking towards india particularly our talented men power so if we people won't be serious someone will be there from outside because 90% education in india is in private hands if we people won't be delivering some outsiders will be delivering someone has to deliver in fact so but at present it is being said that most of the teachers even are not serious towards their job and what are the reason why why students are misbehaving one thing about our curriculum as professor khatri is discussing he is discussing very high tech technology but in classes which we are teaching particularly intel combustion engine still we are concentrating on two stroke engine in 1970 somewhere japan has banned this two stroke engine and but india is dependent upon two stroke engine majority of the vehicles which we are having it is of two stroke so the curriculum which we are having and actual the requirement of the industry is are it is something different suppose some student has studied here in india he is studying most of the time two stroke engine but when he is entering into japan or entering into us there is no technology related to that one so whatever contents he has studied it is not of the use of those country so particular one particular thing um, and due to which friends are not taking interest our curriculum is outdated we are teaching steam engines to them the speed of the steam engines were 20 km per hour but now our prime minister is talking about pilot train which will be moving at the speed of 350 km per hour we are teaching the technology which was meant for 20 km per hour speed and actual requirement is 350 km per hour so whatever is being taught and whatever is actually required there is a huge difference and second one inability to understand the concepts fundamentals if you want to to make any subject interesting first of all fundamental should be clear so first role of the teacher is suppose i am having a class of 60 students first of all i let like to create the interest of the students in that particular subject 
if I could create the interest of the students in that particular subject and then I'm imparting the training, if I'm training, giving training to them, it will be much more useful. So foremost thing, foremost quality of a teacher has to be that he should be able to create interest in that particular subject. And third, again, teachers. The teachers are not able to do justice with the students. That is, again and again, this situation is coming in front of us. So our target is, our target is, students should dream. हम ऐसा माहौल बनाएं क्लास में जो स्वप्न लेना शुरू कर दें आज आपने बात की डॉक्टर खत्री बात कर रहे हैं कि ऐसा कोई स्टूडेंट अगर एक इंजन की एफिशिएंसी थर्मल एफिशिएंसी एक परसेंट इंक्रीज कर देता है हील बी द रिचेस्ट पर्सन इन द वर्ल्ड एक परसेंट एफिशिएंसी पेट्रोल इंजन की एफिशियंसी पच्चीस अगर थर्मल एफिशियंसी है इफ सम कैन क्लेम दैट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी आई कैन डू वाई modifying the engine parameters, he'll be the richest person in the world. So that type of dreaming, that type of dream if teacher can create that you can increase the efficiency from 25 to 26 percent. As a dream, if you have to start your mind, then hundreds of new things he'll be having in his mind and interest will be created. And then up to depth he'll be going. So your teacher's work is to take your mind in your mind. Dream to take your mind. Teaching is scientific. Now teaching is very, very scientific. It is not 30 years back where class size was 10 students. That was not scientific teaching. It was one-way transmission only. Now it is two-way, more or less from other side, this transmission is. So role of teacher is becoming very, very important. And teachers always has to say, will have to make the confidence in the students. Strength ke dimag mein ye aana hai ki we can do. We can dream and whatever we are dreaming, we can do. If those type of situations can be created from teacher's side, I think situation can change. So, are they dreaming? For most thing is the, the, the type of environment in the class we have to create where we'll be saying the students are dreaming. Dekho aap, jo teaching hai, teaching ka maine dikha hai, aar jo chote chote engine, chote chote model banana, jo left hand side mein aapko dikha hai, chote chote model bana ke, alke alke jo hai, aapan students ko dikha sakte hai, and teaching can become very very interesting. Aap complicated jo steam engine dikha ne ki bajai, अगर आप छोटा सा स्वरूप क्लास में ले जाके दिखाएंगे सो टीचिंग विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग विल है टू क्रिएट इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स ऐसे प्रयास करें आप जो है अगर लोड दिखाना ओवरलोडिंग दिखाना है इंजन पे आप ओवरलोडिंग इस तरह से दिखाइए जिससे उनको फिजिकली पता चले व्हाट इज ओवरलोडिंग ऑन द इंजन इफ इंजन इज गेटिंग ओवरलोडेड यू यू कैन सी दस्ट लेवल ऑफ एक्सोज पर्टिकुलर डीजल इंजन ब्लैक स्मोक इज कमिंग आउट वाई इट इज कमिंग आउट दोड एज इंक्रीज एंड इट शुड बी कोरिलेटेड विद प्रैक्टिकल थिंग्स If you, are, if you are teaching them horsepower, you teach like this one. One horse is raising weight out of 75 kg. It is raising to one meter. In a one second, if it is possible, it is equal to one horsepower. So these type of examples we can give. The subject will become interesting. So foremost task with the teachers is to make subject interesting so that students can dream. A concept I tell you about students about diesel and petrol engine. डीजल इंजन क्या है पेट्रोल इंजन क्या है दोनों किस तरह से काम करते हैं द एग्जाम्पल विच आई एम गिविंग वेन आई एम आई एम टीचिंग दिस सब्जेक्ट आई एम सेइंग इन ए पेट्रोल इंजन द फ्यूल एंड एयर विच इज एंट्रिंग इनटू द सिलेंडर इट इज अविंग इनफ टाइम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ मिक्सिंग देर इज अमोजीनियस मिक्सिंग ऑफ एयर एंड फ्यूल वेपर्स ऑफ द पेट्रोल इन साइड द कार्बोरेटर दैट ओमोजीनियस मिक्सर इज एंट्रिंग इन टू दिलेंडर इन दिस एक्शन स्टोक सो प्रोपर मिक्सिंग इज देयर When it is being entered into the cylinder during suction stroke, enough time it is having. Then it is being compressed. Still, lot of time is there even before start of combustion and end of the compression. Somewhere um, um, near TDC, we are producing this part and then flame is pro uh, propagating. So enough time is available. Preparation time is available. In contrary to this, in the case of diesel engine, just air we are taken inside the cylinder during suction stroke. We are compressing that one and very near to top dead center. Without giving time, we are injecting the diesel into the cylinder, and immediately after after injection, the combustion somewhere inside the cylinder combustion is getting started. So time available for mixing this diesel and air is not enough time. No preparations are there. Without preparations, things are getting started, and that's why problem in diesel engine, particularly related to smoke, enough problems are there. So the the, the comparison which I'm I'm giving for petrol and diesel engine, I'm saying. पेट्रोल इंजन इज जस्ट लाइक अरेंज्ड मैरिज अरेंज्ड मैरिज होती है उसमें क्या करते हैं पहले से जो रिश्ता तय करते हैं कार्ड छपवाते हैं मेहमानों को बुलाते हैं एंड एवरीथिंग इज इन ए प्रॉपर वे सो दिहेवियर ऑफ पेट्रोल इंजन इज कोरिलेटेड विद अरेंज्ड मैरिज 
But in the case of diesel engine, without preparation, without thinking, no, no, no planning, no objective we have fixed, no mandate we have taken from anyone, even parents have mandate nahi leta. So diesel engine jo behave karta hai, it is just like court marriage. Court marriage mein ladka ladki registrar ke samne gaye, unhone jo hai apna registration kara liya. No one is in between, even some fight will be there in in future. No one will be there to save them. So the stability of petrol engine is much more. Wo arranged marriage hai and डीजल इंजन की स्टेबिलिटी जो है आपकी कम है बिकॉज इट इज अनप्लान वे सो दीज टाइप ऑफ एग्जाम्पल इफ यू इफ यू आर गिविंग योर सब्जेक्ट कैन बिकम मच मोर इंटरेस्टिंग एक मैं मैं रिपोर्ट आपको जो जस्ट मैं मैं एक एग्जाम्पल दूंगा अपने को प्रैक्टिकल कैसे लिखना है जस्ट वॉट एफर्ट आर ट्राई टू टू फॉर फॉर राइटिंग ऑफ दी एक्सपेरिमेंट मैंने जो प्रयास किया इन दी क्लास in when when 20 students are coming to you class size in nit is say 120 students so in lab 20 students are coming one point of time normally what we are doing we are giving a manual to them 3 hours class is there out of 3 hours one and a half hours they are busy in writing in the laboratory kuch kaam nahi kar rahe hain wo manual de diya usko likh rahe hain teacher is sitting in a corner i try to abolish this one i said i won't give any manual to you just go on the engine come with me whatever minimum will be required formula everything for calculating efficiency load everything i'll be giving to you just start your experimental work in front of me i'll be the observer of that one i'll i'll be the guide of you as you please do these things these steps are there you please do and everything even calculation everything they'll be able to finish in 2 hours no writing nothing is there aapne minimum cheeze unko de di aapne sath mein baith ke unka guide ban ke you are done remaining one hour you allow the students to sit in the in the, in the laboratory close everything sit in the laboratory you also become the part teacher is also becoming the part and ask one by one student that whatever you learnt in two hours you please explain here do do tin tin minute ka time dijiye unko so one their agitation will go another one during those two hours they'll be very serious because they'll have to explain in front of you so that's that type of effort i tried and after completion of three hours i said you go into the hostel whatever you learnt today You write in the form of research paper. आप जैसे पेपर लिखते हैं आप चाहे टू स्टोक इंजन पे आपने जो लोड टेस्ट ही किया है उसको एक रिसर्च पेपर की फॉर्म में लिख दीजिए किस तरह से जस्ट यू राइट योर योर ऑब्जेक्टिव देन यू राइट डाउन एब्सट्रैक्ट ऑफ दैट वन एब्सट्रैक्ट उन्होंने लिखा और ये जो जो पिंक लिख रहा है दे यूज टू सेंड मी थ्रू मेल्स वॉट एवर दे आर राइटिंग सिक्स पेजेस दे आर गोइंग ऑन गूगल दे आर गोइंग ऑन जर्नल दे आर सर्चिंग सम बुक्स एंड रिलेटेड टू टू स्टोक Indian, they are writing. So this this pink which is available, that these are my comments. So after writing, they used to send to me through mail. Is me jo ko bhi kamiya hai, jo comment ka option hai apne word ke andar. I was correcting that one. I was correcting that one. I was sending back to them. So they are writing and the 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 uh, title. They are writing the abstract. They are writing the literature review. They are writing the experimental setup. They are they are then observation table, then calculation, then finally results discussion, and even finally references also from where they are. taken this metal even references they are writing so their writing skills are increasing as well as the, the depth into the subject they will be entering into the, the, the deep of the subjects for the purpose of learning because they let to submit so everything in the form of research paper and i used to send my comments wherever some changes are needed yes everything everything in the form of research paper ye dekho aap jitna bhi aapko maine to kafi karni padi hai kyunki aapko sara check karke wapis every to every student you let to send you are having 120 students in one semester you are having 10 experiments so number of mails which you are receiving that is 120 multiplied by 10 1200 mails you will be receiving and you will be replying the advantage was advantage with this was that students has started to search the result uh, search the literature interest has been created and after doing three four experiments they started to suggest me sir that in place of doing this experiment like this one this experiment ko agar aise karte apan that would have been better मतलब स्टूडेंट्स की तरफ से आपको सजेशन आने लग गए दे आर बिकम जस्ट लाइक टीचर्स ऑफ यू दे आर गाइडिंग यू एंड आई ऑब्जर्व आफ्टर डूइंग सेवन एट एक्सपेरिमेंट दीज कन्वेंशनल राइट अप दे आर स्टार्टेड टू प्रेजेंट इन सेमिनार्स आल्सो छोटी छोटी सेमिनार में उन्होंने जाना शुरू कर दिया एंड एंड रिक्रूटमेंट ड्राइव इज देयर व्हेन इंडस्ट्रीज आर कमिंग फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ प्लेसमेंट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दे आर आस्किंग व्हाट इज योर सब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट तो क्योंकि उन्होंने इतना स्टडी कर लिया था सब कुछ स्टडी कर लिया था इमीडिएटली दे दे वर सेइंग सर कि मेरा आईसी इंजन इसमें कुछ भी पूछ लीजिए इस तरह का अगर आप माहौल क्रिएट कर देते हैं द अंडरस्टैंडिंग विल बी मच मोर एंड टू डे स्टूडेंट्स द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज व्हिच वी आर हैविंग देयर राइटिंग स्किल्स आर गोइंग डाउन राइटिंग क्या कर रहे हैं वो एसएमएस की लैंग्वेज में लिख रहे हैं दे दे आर हैबिचुअल टू राइट एसएमएस 
in place of y o u they are writing u so if this type of mechanism we can devise if this type of exercises we can give i think this problem can be sorted out but the load on the teacher will be increasing just just by just by doing nokri aap jo hai chaut is tarah se kar de wo nahi the every minute of your life you have to be with these friends then only these changes you can do so attention of the students are important willingness of the students are important and insight in every student from teacher side it's very very important and towards teachers towards students always be polite be positive and helpful to them we are not the inspectors in fact students pe hum inspector nahi hai hamara role ek guide ka hona chahiye hamara role ek parent ka hona chahiye hamara role ek facilitator ka hona chahiye itta इस तरह का हो चाहे यू मे बी ए वेरी वेरी हार्ड टीचर यू मे वेरी वेरी रूड ऑल्सो बट इफ स्टूडेंट्स आर थिंकिंग दैट यू आर वेरी ट्रांसपेरेंट यू विल बी डूइंग जस्टिस विद दी स्टूडेंट्स आपका बिहेवियर चाहे रूड हो स्टूडेंट्स के प्रति आप चाहे बिल्कुल रफ हो आप अपने प्रिंसिपल्स पे बंधे हुए हो इफ यू आर ट्रांसपेरेंट स्टूडेंट्स विल बी हैविंग फेथ ऑन यू नो इनडिसिप्लिन विल बी ऑब्जर्व इफ यू आर ट्रांसपेरेंट इनडिसिप्लिन सिचुएशन आर कमिंग इफ यू आर बायस्ड इफ यू आर नॉट ट्रांसपेरेंट if you are not doing justice with the students then these situations are coming so whatever the size of the class may be if we, we are transparent the things will be something different main batata hu ek choti si kahani batata hu aapko ki aapke liye sabse important kya hai aapka subject kitna important hai ek philosopher ne ek ek boat kiraye pe li hmm ghumne ke liye ek boat kiraye pe li samundar mein chal pade jo hai boat ko chalane wala tha wo illiterate tha और फिलोसोफर जो बहुत बहुत एजुकेटेड था जैसे ही वो चलते जा रहे थे समुद्र में चलते जा रहे थे फिलोसोफर ने उस बोट चलाने वाले को पूछा कि आपने जीवन दर्शन पढ़ा है क्या आपने ग्रामर पढ़ी है क्या क्या आपने जीवन को समझा है क्या दैट पुअर पहलो इज सेड सर नथिंग आई हैव नॉट स्टडीड एनी मैं तो जन्म से ही जो है ये नाव चलाने का काम करता हूँ आज तक भी ये करता जा रहा हूँ आप जैसे बड़े लोग आते हैं उनको मैं ले जाता हूँ वापिस ले आता हूँ फिलोसोफर सेट योर हाफ लाइफ हैज गोन आपने आधा जीवन ऐसे ही गंवा दिया क्योंकि आपने जीवन दर्शन नहीं पढ़ा है आपके पास वो ज्ञान नहीं है जो मेरे पास है जीवन दर्शन का आफ्टर सम टाइम दी 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 सी बिकेम अनस्टेबल स्टोर माया तूफान आने लगा उसके अंदर नाव अनस्टेबल होने लगी नाव का जो जो चलाने वाला था उसने फिलोसोफर से पूछा डू यू नो स्विमिंग उन्होंने कहा नहीं मैं तो जीवन दर्शन जानता हूं स्विमिंग नहीं जानता सेट योर होल लाइफ इज गोन My half life was gone because मैं जीवन दर्शन नहीं जानता था बट यू डोंट नो स्विमिंग योर होल लाइफ हैज गॉन अब आप डूबोगे जो सो फॉर मोस्ट टास्क इज योर कंसेंट्रेशन योर कॉन्फिडेंस जो जिस फील्ड में हो उसमें आपकी महारत हासिल होनी चाहिए आपको जीवन दर्शन से क्या लेना है दर्शन तो जो लोगों को देना है आपके पास ज्ञान जो है वो बांटना है वो ज्ञान ऐसा होना चाहिए यू शुड बी हंड्रेड परसेंट परफेक्ट इन दैट वन ए टीचर विदाउट इंस्पिरेशन इफ ही इज टीचिंग without inspiration to the students without knowing what they are able to understand or not no inspiration if he is giving it is just like hammering cold iron thande iron pe aap hammer marte raho kuch bhi change nahi hoga till you will be you will not be heating that one heating means you are inspiring the students heating iron means you are inspiring the students so foremost thing is inspiration to the students and insight into the students inside a class your physical position should be that you should be able to have eye contact with every student continuously you should be able to move into the class and involvement of the students is very very important students should be involved you should achieve excellence in your subject in your area that excellence should be sustained also today i am suppose excellent in ice engines tomorrow i may not be because everything is changing so excellence has to be maintained also it has to be sustained and whatever excellence i am having i should be able to exchange with others also whatever knowledge i am having if I, if i am unable to exchange with the friends or with my colleagues there is no use of that excellence so achieving excellence maintaining that excellence and sharing that excellence is very very important from the friends we let to have very high expectations very high expectations and we let to say you people can do just example of this eagle say eagle is very very confident very confident eagle always flies with eagle eagle kisi dusri pakshiyon ke sath kabhi nahi udta hai and highest level it can achieve even when adverse situations are there when rain is there when storm is there most of the uh, uh, most of the, uh, these birds are going into their nests but this eagle won't go it is going above the clouds 
जहां से प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट होती है उससे ऊपर चली जाती है नो नो अफेक्ट ऑन ऑन द द सिचुएशन ऑफ दिस ईगल इज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्रॉम दिस स्टूडेंट्स वी लेट हैव हाई एक्सपेक्टेशंस जस्ट लाइक ईगल कि किसी भी तरह के एडवर्स सिचुएशन को वो फेस कर पाए एंड सेकंड वन बी फोकस्ड इट कैन सी अप टू 5 किलोमीटर्स ऑलवेज इट रिमेंस फोकस्ड द ईगल कैन सी 5 किलोमीटर डिस्टेंस इट कैन कवर आवर स्टूडेंट्स शुड बी वेरी वेरी फोकस्ड दे शुड बी वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट दे शुड बी फोकस्ड जस्ट लाइक ईगल एंड ईगल डोंट वांट ओल्ड थिंग्स इसके पंख भी ये बार-बार अपने आप चेंज कर लेती है नए पंख ले आती है ये अपने चोंच को भी तोड़ के नई चोंच बना लेती है ये अपने पंजों को भी तोड़ के नया बना लेती है इट डोंट वांट ओल्ड करिकुलम जो जो टीचर्स भी ऐसे होने चाहिए कि जो जो ईगल से सीखें कि ये पुरानी चीजें रखना पसंद नहीं करती सो आवर करिकुलम चेंज इन करिकुलम इन सच ए वे सो दैट इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स कैन बी क्रिएटेड इट शुड बी जस्ट लाइक ईगल ओनली आवर करिकुलम शुड बी जस्ट लाइक ईगल ओनली एंड इन एडवर्सिटी इट इज अज्यूमिंग एट अपॉर्चुनिटी व्हेन स्टॉर्म्स आर देयर दैट प्रेशर ऑफ एयर इट इज यूटिलाइजिंग फॉर मूविंग एट हायर एल्टीट्यूड्स यस दैट एडवर्सिटी इट इज क्रिएटिंग इट इज इट इज कन्वर्टिंग इनटू पॉजिटिविटी ऑफ दैट वन एंड देन कमिटमेंट इसका कमिटमेंट देखो आप जब ये अपना दोस्त बनाती है फीमेल जब मेल को दोस्त बनाती है तो क्या करती है ये ऊपर उड़ती उड़ती कुछ छोटी छोटी लकड़ियां नीचे गिराती है और मेल को कहती है कि आप इसको पकड़ के लाओ हवा में ये जो है पकड़ने के लिए कहती है वंस ट्वाइस थ्राइस इट इज डूइंग लाइक दिस वन देखो आप जो है ये करती है मेल और ये लकड़ी छोड़ती है ऊपर से इसको एफर्ट करती है कि ये पकड़ने का जो है इसके अंदर देखे वेन इज वेन सी सेटिस्फाइड देन ओनली सी इज मेकिंग द फ्रेंड्स से दैट इज कमिटमेंट एंड स्ट्रगल ये अपने बच्चों को हाईएस्ट लेवल से नीचे गिरा देती है जब भी ओढ़ने योग्य होते हैं गिरा देती है कि नाउ यू गो सो दिस स्ट्रगल अकॉर्डिंग टू स्ट्रगल स्टूडेंट्स हैज टू बी चेंज्ड एक हाई स्पिरिट और दिखाना चाहता हूं मैं आपको जो सैद जो बनता है ना एक सैद की जो मक्खी होती है साइज ऑफ दैट वन आदमी से साइज उसका शायद वन वन बाई वन लैक होता होगा बट द माइंड विच सी इज एविंग इट इज मच मोर देन ह्यूमन बींग ये जो हाइव दिख रहा है आपका This angle with horizontal is 130 degree. Always every hive is having angle 130 degree. Taki set jo hai niche nahi gir jaye. And second one, always it surrounds that one. It is maintaining temperature of 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 that that uh, uh, jo jo honey jo hai. In honey comb temperature has to be 35 degree Celsius. Jis se viscosity kam nahi honi to niche gir jayega. First angle it is providing 130 degree with horizontal. Another one for maintaining the viscosity temperature always is 35 degree Celsius. Or, ये इसको घेर के रखती है जिससे temperature change नहीं हो जाए. And not a single drop of honey they are consuming. So finally, believe the purpose of life is to serve. जो purpose of the life, particularly for the teachers, is to serve. जब हम जीवन से में यहाँ पे आए थे, nothing we have brought and when we were leaving, nothing we were taking away. So this type of spirit among these friends will have to create. They should be ingenious. Our target has to be engage them, inspire them. and involve our students involvement of the students is foremost and greatest sign of a greatest teacher is even if teacher is not in the class if teacher is outside under students are sitting in the class if they are engaged without teacher if they are engaged it means teacher is great unki absence mein bhi agar students utta hi badhiya se role ada kar rahe hain it means teacher is a great teacher and sharpen your x do view dikhaye hain maine one one side uh, i have uh, shown जो जो आपकी बटरफ्लाई है अनदर साइड जो जो कैटरपिलर्स हैं कैटरपिलर्स आर फाइटिंग ईच अदर एंड बटरफ्लाई एलोन व्हेन वी आर असेसिंग दी स्टूडेंट्स डोंट असेस देम व्हाट डोंट कंपेयर देम ईच अदर जस्ट यू कंपेयर हाउ मच ही वाज हैविंग नॉलेज अर्लियर एंड हाउ मच इज हैविंग टुडे सेवन डेज बैक व्हाट नॉलेज ही वॉज हैविंग टू डे वट इज हैविंग आफ्टर फिफ्टीन डेज वट इज हैविंग सो वैल्यू एडिशन Value addition daily. How much value addition is there? So competition with um, himself has to be not with the others. You students को ऐसे assess नहीं करिए कि तेरे को कम आता है तेरे को ज़्यादा no. आपको अब क्या आता है बाद में क्या आता था? Just I'll be finishing. Two minutes I'll be finishing. So this type of assessment of the students has to be individual students has to be assessed. कि आपने जब इस college में admission लिया था तब कैसे थे? आज कैसे हो? साल बाद कैसे होगे? पांच साल बाद कैसे होगे? It should not be compared with other students. कि वो कैसा था? वो कैसा हो गया? No competition should be with ourselves. not with the others that is just like butterfly not just like caterpillars acche teacher ke sath agar rehte hain to yogyata badhti hai agar wohi acha bachcha kharab teacher ke sath rehta hai yogyata is going down from 90% to 30% 7% so role of teacher is very very important earlier classes which we were having that was teacher centric and and we were um, we were um, pushing the knowledge this, the, the, the learners were outside 
the, the, the teacher was in the center and it was being pushed. Now the classes which we are having, now the, the classes which we are having, the learner is inside, learner is inside. He is pulling the knowledge from every source and uh, um, somewhere teacher is there, somewhere Google is there, somewhere journal is there. So from every source it is extracting the knowledge. So it is now pull type knowledge. Other, other uh, Earlier it was push type, teacher was pushing everything to the student. Now the, the, the student is pulling every from every source. We people, we people are how we are helping in engaging these type of classes. The studio from where I am speaking, we are we are live streaming the content, the, the knowledge which we people are having or we are inviting experts here with the help of them. We are streaming live. So I am requesting the many of the programs which are conducting, please do connect it with us and, and, and our mandate, our role, we people are tr trying to do justice with that one. Please take help of our experts, our expertise, be connected with us and have strong bonding with us. Whatever we people are delivering, it is available on Nitra Chandigarh Technology Enabled Learning web portal. So the lectures which will be delivered even during five days, those will be available on web portal also. Please take the advantage of this and sometimes you please do visit Chandigarh also. Many, many beautiful places are there and most beautiful place is Nitra Chandigarh. So please do come to Chandigarh, become the part of this one and hope our, our, our mandate which has been given to us by the government of India will be able to do justice with this one. So thank you, thank you very much for giving opportunity. And again, I'm extending my sincere thanks to Dr. Khatri and his team members who will be the part of this institute for five days and not only five days, in many, many areas, in many, many topics, many, many programs, they'll be uh, contributing a great for, for the betterment of the teachers. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Punia. In fact, uh, Dr. Punia has to catch a flight right now. He has some appointment at the ministry. So, sir, uh, uh, thank you very much that you, in spite of your busy schedule, you have uh, given us the time. And uh, now we'll be breaking for tea. And uh, uh, after half an hour, then we'll be again meeting and we'll be having a session with Dr. Khatri, who will be talking on the fundamentals of EHS. So, we'll break for tea now. Thank you. Very nice.
yeah welcome back to all the participants for this talk which is going to be held on engine management system let's i take you to the very basics of engines and generally i give an example about the fundamental requirement of an human beings if we look at ourselves we find that we need food some liquid and what else some air if i specify the quantity even then you can get an idea that liquid i may required may be 3 to 4 liter per day food may be 1 kg or 1.5 kg including breakfast lunch and dinner and next is air do you know how much air we need you may find this question is little bit difficult and if i ask that without food we can survive for days our engine can work our system can work without liquid also we can survive for weeks and without air we cannot survive even more than few minutes from this i conclude that air is more basic requirement and more fundamental requirement because i can't survive without this similarly an internal combustion engines which is being used in all motorcycle scooter cars buses and trucks their fundamental requirement is fuel that is source of energy like here we are taking food maybe pratha rice rajma anything there we are taking a chemical energy in the form of diesel or petrol or cng or lpg any source we can use and another thing i need that is a air like we have explained for a human body the most fundamental requirement is air similarly if you want to shut off an engine you just put a hand on the intake system immediately it will die it will switch off so more fundamental requirement is air in the case of engine also like a human body it means the oxidation process the combustion process which is taking place that is due to the oxygen which is present in the air now if i take you little bit 120 years before when the first internal combustion engine was invented and it was used on the vehicle at that time everybody was very excited and everybody was very happy do you know why at that time when this engine was fitted in a first horseless carriage in the city of london the people were happy and they thought they have get rid from the pollution which was created at that time by the wastage of horses because horses was the main source of the propulsion and the wastage of horses the lying on the streets big heaps so that is giving a stringent smell because it is not one horse thousand horses were there on the street of the cities and that engine was developing only seven horse power and the size of engine was 4 liter today one liter engine can develop 70 horse power it means we have 
improve the efficiency of the engines by 10 times since then. How it has been done? What is engine management system? We would like to understand today in this discussion. Now, as we have discussed that most fundamental requirement is air. Let me understand the composition of air. Air is composed of by volume around 21% of oxygen and around 78% of nitrogen. You know oxygen is necessary for the oxidation. Even when I am breathing, I am utilizing the content of the oxygen which is around 21% in the air. Nitrogen is an inert gas and there are other traces which are less than 1% like argon, CO2 and all that, that we are not focused at this moment. Let me understand there are two main constituent of the air, 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen. And this air combined with the hydrocarbon, you know, we have to understand whether it is petrol, either it is diesel, either it is CNG, like CNG is very easy, very simple gas. The composition is like 80% is methane. And methane, if I go by the chemical formula, it is CH4. It means any fuel, either it is petrol, or it is diesel, or it is biodiesel, or it is LPG, or it is CNG, it is a composition of hydrocarbons, means carbon and hydrogenate. And what we are taking also, carbohydrate. When these carbohydrates are burning, they are bound to produce CO2. Similarly, as I exhale, if I take the composition, CO2 is more. Similarly, when the engine is giving the exhaust gases, there is a CO2 in that. But CO2 will be there if the complete combustion has taken place. If there is an incomplete combustion, then there may be CO formation also. There may be unburned hydrocarbons also. That we will discuss in the subsequent slides. So generally when I am talking about an engine, suppose I have a 1 litre engine, what it means? Some car manufacturers say 800 cc engine, some say 1000 cc engine or 1 litre, hero motorcycle say 1000 cc engine, you know all this? What, but what it means? What it means? 100 cc. What it means? 800 cc. What it means? 1 liter engine. What it means? 2 liter engine. So today, even I am trying to mention what it means engine capacity. 800 cc means the engine can suck a volume of 800 cc amount of air which it can breathe into the combustion chamber. The displacement volume when the piston is moving from the top to dead, bottom dead center, it can suck around 800 cc of air by volume. It means 2 liter engine will consume more, more air, more air means more power because it can oxidize more fuel. Another doubt I am clearing that when you want to increase the power, it is not necessary and you cannot do by giving more fuel. 
suppose I want you to okay give me more power. Do you take more food? You have to take that much only. But if I ask you, okay, now run fast. So what is changing? You are taking more air. Right? So I am taking more air. I am not taking more food. So whenever the engine is working, it needs more air. Proportionately, I have to decrease the quantity of fuel also. But paramount importance is air. So now it is clear. What do you mean by 100 cc, 500 cc and 1000 cc? Higher the capacity, more the amount of air engine can take and more the power it can produce. Now, during our calculations of engine management system, what we are talking about, we are calculating how much amount of air the engine has taken. Because if I know that correctly, then I will calculate what is the amount of fuel I need to inject. And for this calculations, I have to calculate the mass of air. And mass of the air is equal to volume of the air into density. So density we are using around 1.18 kilogram per cubic meter. Some vapors are also there. So those at this moment we are not considering. Now next what is there? Air is there fundamental. Next we are talking about any hydrocarbons and we call it a fuel. So any fuel, any substance, any chemical composition which can be converted from its chemical energy into heat energy. We can use that fuel. Do you know the first engine which was tried? They have used coal, not steam engine. You know, even in compression ignition engines, the the coal was powdered very finely, and that was injected into the engine. Because at that time, petrol and diesel were not known. And if you go to the era, earlier we were using solid fuels. There are three category of fuels, solid fuels that is coal and wood. Then there we feel it is giving lot of smoke, lot of pollution and lot of waste. Because when you will burn coal, there is lot of ash. Then they thought how we can clean the environment and then comes the liquid fuels. Petrol, diesel, kerosene, these are the category of liquid fuel. Definitely, as compared to wood and coal, liquid burning is more cleaner. And now, why CNG has started in the engines? Why in Delhi, Supreme Court has ordered, okay, all the buses, all the public transport playing on roads in Delhi, that should be fitted only with CNG. Why? Because it is a clean fuel. By nature, it is a clean fuel. So, solids are creating more pollution. Liquids are creating less as compared to solid and gaseous fuels are creating much lesser pollutants as compared to liquid and solids of course. You take any fuel it is a combination of carbon and hydrogen. Generally the percentage of carbon and hydrogen it varies. In petrol it is different. In CNG say CH4. So one atom of carbon is and four atom of hydrogen. So basically these two are conventional fuel. Most of your 90%, 95% vehicles are running on petrol and diesel. So we call it conventional fuels. But to reduce the pollution, to clean the environment, some unconventional fuels are also being used. 
and one of that is CNG, compressed natural gas. The chemical composition of CNG is more than 80 percent, it is methane, CH4. Now, very important aspect, very important aspect, that is, if you want to be healthy, if you want to optimize yourself properly, suppose every day you are taking three chapati and some salad and you know, if I ask you 10, 10 chapati, will you get more power? No. Even your system may have some problem. You may get some problem. If I ask you to take half chapati, again you may have some problem. The important aspect in engineering and even in human health, it is the what is the appropriate quantity which you should take. It is easy to take less, it is easy to take more, but the appropriate because you don't know what is appropriate. Similarly, air fuel ratio, it will tell you for a given amount of air you calculate how much fuel is required. If you are giving less than that, it may cause problem. That again we have to understand what type of problem it will cause. If you are giving more, again it will cause a problem. Like in a human body, if I am taking too much food, I have a problem. If I am taking too less fuel, too less food, again it may be a problem. So, appropriate quantity, appropriate food, appropriate fuel is a design parameters which is very basic to get the maximum output from the engine, maximum output from your body, maximum efficiency of your body, maximum efficiency from the engine with minimum pollution. Here again I am defining, if you are taking more food, we call it rich, you are taking rich food. If I am taking less, it is lean. In engine also, I am correlating these aspects so that you know it gets into your memory. So whenever you feel, oh, ask for many rich, rich, I have taken rich food, which means you have taken more, more food, more energy. If I am giving, suppose I am taking one kilogram of fuel, how much air is required to complete the combustion? That we call it stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Stoichiometric air fuel ratio means if I am using one unit of fuel, either it may be in gram, either it may be in kg, unit is a unit, one unit of fuel, I need how much air or for one unit of air, how much fuel can be used. This is called air fuel ratio and it is a very important aspect and we call it stoichiometric air fuel ratio. So what is stoichiometric air fuel ratio? To burn one kilogram of fuel, how much air you need so that the combustion is completed, that is a chemical equation. For CH4, I can make CH4 plus O2 will produce CO2 plus H2O. So by chemical formulas, I can calculate how much amount of air we need for a particular fuel and this quantity of air requirement will be different for different fuel. If I am using methane, it will be approximately, I am guiding you, it is 17 times more. If to burn 1 kg of CNG, I need 17 kilogram of air. To burn 1 kg of petrol, I need 14.7 kilogram of air. This is known as air fuel ratio 
and if I am using the calculated stoichiometric air fuel ratio, it is chemically ideally required. Actually, how much is going to the engine? That is a different aspect. Chemically, it should go 14.7 in petrol engine. Now, let us see how much it is going. If it is going more fuel, less air, we call it rich mixture. If fuel is less, air is more, we call it lean mixture. So, there are three definitions now. One is stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Another is chemically correct, which is stoichiometric. If air is more, we call it lean mixture. If air is less, fuel is more, we call it rich mixture. And the ratio of the actual air fuel ratio and to the stoichiometric air fuel ratio is known as lambda. Because in this lambda sensor we are using in the engine management system. So, I am giving you the background. What is lambda? Lambda is, suppose, chemically I have calculated, okay, to burn 1 kg of fuel, I need a ratio of 14.7 is to 1. So, 14.7 is the air, 1 kg is the gasoline. Now, if it is 15, so actual is on the upper side. So, lambda is equal to 15 divided by 14.7. So, the value will be more than 1. So, we call it lean. The lambda value is 1.1 say, 1.01 whatever it may be. And if air fuel ratio actual is less, it need 14.7 but it is 13. So, it will be 13 divided by 14.7. So, that will be less than 1. So, either the value will be more than 1 or it will be less than 1 or it will be 1. If it is 1, we call it stoichiometric. And 1 by lambda is equal to 12 ns ratio. It is reciprocal of lambda. We call it fuel air ratio divided by fuel air ratio, but anyone will do for you. Now, all struggle is going on how to control the air and fuel ratio. So, this is one aspect of the mixture preparation. Suppose, I am taking 50 cc of air, how much I know if I have to give 3 cc of fuel, how I give 3 cc? Neither 3.1, neither 2.9. How to make sure? And that too, because the engine is varying speed and load conditions, the condition is changing. So, as soon as the condition is changing, I have to change the quantity of fuel also, because air will change. And in running condition to change it, air is going high, low, high, low. So, fuel is also to match with that requirement. If I am able to do with 100% efficiency, it will be good. If I am not able to do, your fuel economy of your engine will be poor, your pollution will be more, waste of energy will be more. So, now I think three things are clear, stoichiometric air fuel ratio, where lambda is 1, rich air fuel ratio, where lambda is and lean, it is more than. Now, I am giving some air fuel ratio of different fuels here. For petrol, it is around 14.7. For diesel, it is 14.5. For propane, it is 15.6. For methane, that is CNG, it is 17.2. For hydrogen, a wonderful fuel. Why it is a wonderful fuel? It do not have the carbon content, only hydrogen. So, you will not produce CO2, because there is no carbon. So, that is a fuel of the future. Even in the aircraft, when you are going there, 
so you are using some this type of concept but that can be used up to certain level but for oxidation you need oxygen but where is the oxygen so either there is a carrier of the oxygen in cylinder we have to carry and one cylinder of hydrogen one cylinder of oxygen because air is not available there space application and secondly hydrogen is very high calorific value it is three times more than the petrol and diesel one kg of hydrogen has around 120 megajoules of energy whereas one liter of petrol has only 42 megajoules of energy so energy content is more so ethanol we are using ethanol also and we are using methanol also now why it is so important let we should understand why it is so important to control the air fuel issue why we are talking about so much okay if it is lean it is there what happens if it is lean what happens if it is rich what happens if it is stoichiometric i should know i should understand that let now these are the two curve when is indicating about the power output of the engine you can see the upper curve is the power output okay and bottom curve is given the specific fuel consumption now if you look at where is the maximum power you are getting around 12.4 it means here mixture is rich if i use same mixture so my fuel consumption is higher but i want fuel consumption should be low if i am making it lean at stoichiometric air fuel ratio around 14.7 the fuel consumption is reducing but it is not to the minimum level minimum fuel consumption i am getting around 16 is to 1 but if i am using the 16 is to 1 i am getting very fuel economy but i am not getting the power. power and that is a challenge and that's why engine management system is coming into picture to manage all this scene now i have shown you one slide only where the power and fuel consumption what about emissions emissions is also challenging task i have to reduce the emissions also now let's we can see the effect on the emissions also to understand the emissions let me make you clear the fundamentals of combustion why i am trying to get the stoichiometric what happen because ultimately i am burning the fuel burning rate what happened to the burning rate if you see the dark line bottom line is the flame speed the flame produced in the petrol with which the combustion can take place so maximum flame speed is around rich mixture it means petrol can burn very quickly when the mixture is slightly rich slightly rich if you will make it 10 no not good if you are making it 18 not good from combustion point of view so flame speed is maximum around 13.8 air fuel ratio there your combustion is very fast it means the upon it uh, like you take some okay you take some tonic but 10% tonic will do if you take 50% tonic it will not do so here with the engine also little tonic little extra fuel will make your combustion better will make your power better clear now this is all three it means if you see what is the challenge to me if i want to get the very good combustion i need different air fuel ratio if i want to get maximum power i need different air fuel ratio 
if I want to get maximum fuel economy, I need different air fuel ratio and they are contradicting each other. So as an engineer, as a scientist, as a technical expert, what should I do? Whether I should operate at the upper one, middle one or lower one, that is a challenge. Now this we have make it clear the basic three things. Now let's come to the emissions. There are CO, there is HC and there is NOx emission. Now if you look at the NOx emission, NOx is maximum, it is a bell shape. NOx is maximum when lambda is 1 or air fuel ratio is 14 is to 1, 14 is to 7. If I am operating very close to stoichiometry, so NOx emission will be very high. That is a problem. If hydrocarbon, if you see, as I make the mixture rich, hydrocarbon emissions is going up. If I am making lean also, again it is going up. So hydrocarbon emissions, if I want to reduce, I have to play around 14.8 or 14.9. But if I am operating there, NOx is maximum. Because I have to regulate both. Emissions regulations say NOx should be also low. Hydrocarbon emissions should be also low. Let, let's come to the third. CO emissions. If I am using a rich mixer, CO is very high. So if I want to increase the power, it means hydrocarbon will go up slightly, CO will go up. If I am making it lean, power will reduce, but again hydrocarbon will increase, fuel economy will improve and CO will reduce. So for CO from this trend, I see that lean mixture is good for CO reduction. Why it is good? We will cover it tomorrow in combustion study. Hydrocarbon emissions if I want to reduce, so I can operate the engine very close to stoichiometry, around 14.715 in that range. But here NOx is very high. If I want to reduce the NOx, either I can operate rich or I can operate lean. So it means for CO it is different issue. For HC it is different air fuel ratio requirement and for NOx it is different. Now I have six parameters or for your understanding let's say five parameters. I want power, I want fuel economy, air fuel ratio requirement for power is different, for fuel economy is different, for CO it is different, for hydrocarbon it is different and for NOx it is different. So there are five things which I have to control and all the five things are requiring different type of air fuel ratio. So how to manage all these things? You need something else, you need something else, you need something else, you need something else. Suppose you are CO, you are HC, you are NOx, you are fuel economy, you are power. So everybody say I need this and I need all optimum for a good engine. So this challenge is identified and people thought how to meet this requirement. So we are going to talk about this in this series. Earlier to meet the air and fuel ratio requirement, we were using carburetor. You know carburetor? The first engine, when it was designed in 1900, it was using the carburetor. And since then, there were a lot of modifications in the carburetor were done. So, if air is 1 kilogram, how much fuel is to be given? That was controlled by the carburetor. So, carburetor is a device which was metering the air and which was mixing the appropriate quantity of fuel into the air. So that was done like that. Even today motorcycle engines, most of the motorcycle engines, they are working with the carburetor. 
why but today no car is using carburetor carburetor is obsolete in 2000 because it was not able to meet the emissions it was not able to reduce the emissions beyond euro 2 up to euro 1 it was good it can meet euro 1 or bharat stage 1 but then they say okay you reduce co further you reduce hc further you reduce nox further carburetor was not able to meet then what to do why it was not able to do because carburetor was not able to control the air and fuel ratio very accurately very precisely it was not able to do and hence the system like electronic fuel injection system was introduced and today we will talk about this system in fuel injection system there are different type of options are available we have single point injection system where we are using only one injector we have throttle body injection system we are using injecting in the throttle body itself we are using central fuel injection cfi we are using port mpi multi point injection system suppose there is a three cylinder engine so we are using one cylinder or in every cylinder we are using one injector to inject the fuel the gdi it is a new concept in india there is no car which is using gdi but some car has been tried it is a gasoline direct injection system here the injector is mounted directly into the combustion chamber so it is a more complicated we will touch upon this but today our focus will be to understand the fundamental of the mixture preparation that is one part is carburetor little bit i give the background what is a carburetor i have given you little bit and then why carburetor is obsolete and why we have introduced the fuel injection technology you see just because it is history we should know our parents our grandparents name it is like that so in technology also we should know what was there and how it was improved you know earlier we were using single barrel carburetor so there was one one passage only from where air was coming and fuel was injected there you know the problem is engine is working or it is bound to work under a wide range of speed and load when you start the engine it is known as idling it is running at 900 rpm when you accelerate put first gear you are accelerating maybe 1200 maybe 2000 change the gear if you are on the highway running at a 90 km per hour speed the engine speed may be 4000 rpm load is varying engine speed is varying so that one barrel only was not able to meet the varying requirement of the engine air and fuel then what they thought that we can use double barrel like this there are two port has been submitted so that gives little bit better performance but again it was not optimized why it was not able to meet the requirement because there is a fixed jet which is giving the petrol so the fixed jet can give the fixed amount of fuel at that particular speed it cannot vary because jet size is fixed and you have put in the carburetor the jet size may be 1 mm jet size may be 1.2 mm so that may be good at 2000 rpm but that may not be good at 4000 rpm so i cannot meet the requirement under all conditions no second more important thing is when you start the engine in the morning because carburetor is using a pressure delta p what is the difference between the atmosphere pressure and in the carburetor at the throttle where this venturi is there here pressure drops and fuel comes from this to the venturi here the pressure difference delta p is very low so when you are starting the engine the fuel atomization is poor because the fuel is liquid here 
when it is coming here, it's, it is coming in drops. If drop is very fine, the diameter of the drop is very fine, very, very fine, it will mix in the air very well. Like if you have a big cube of sugar, it is difficult to mix in the milk or water, but if you have very fine powder, it is quickly you can mix it. So, and this problem is more prone at low speed. At high speed, speed is very high. So, if you mix, it can mix up. But at low speed, it is not mixing. So, that was one problem with the carburetor. Poor atomization, we can call it, technically. Due to poor atomization, idling was unstable. In the, suppose you want to fix 900 RPM. So, sometimes it is going 950, sometimes 850, sometimes 1000. You are not changing anything, but still engine is changing its speed because of this behavior, which is good, good, not good for fuel economy point of view, neither it is good for the efficiency point of view and nor from emissions point of view. Now, another important thing I am giving a figure per cycle per cylinder, typical 800 cc, like this is the example of Maruti 800 cc car or Alto 800 cc, that need only 3 gram of fuel per cycle per cylinder, only 3 milligram, 3 milligram, to meter 3 milligram, it, it becomes 2.9 or 3.1, your stoichiometric equation has changed, your air fuel ratio has changed drastically. So, I have calculated, okay, I have a carburetor, please give me 3 milligram. But carburetor, sometime it is giving 2.8, sometime it is giving 3.2, sometime it may be giving 3 also, but it is not giving constant. So my efficiency, my pollution is going in a different direction. I mean, speed change, hobby, so engineering speed if speed is increasing, more amount of air is coming in and more fuel will come. Uh, that, is, that is met by carburetor. That is taken here. But the problem is that size is same. So it may come, it will increase, but it may not increase appropriately which is required by the engine. That is a the problem. There is a little bit slag in that. Now sec, another thing, if carburetor is one and if I have three cylinder engine, so that same fuel is going through the intake manifold, right? So we call it mixed distribution. The fuel going, because I have put in the center, now there are three cylinders like this, one is here, one is here, one is here, and fuel has traveled to this. In the center it has a shorter path, and it has a longer path. Even I have given the same quantity of fuel, but when reaching to the combustion chamber, it may be different because the traveling distance is different, it may stuck on the walls also of the intake manifold. So, mixture distribution is not uniform, clear? Now, one important aspect also I am telling you, during highway driving conditions, suppose I am running at a speed of 80 km, I am driving, due to any reason, I have seen, okay, there is some traffic problem, I have to reduce my speed. So, what I will do? I will remove the foot from the accelerator pedal. My throttle position will become zero. But car is still running, it will not come down immediately. Suppose it is, up, I have to stop up to two kilometer. This period, we call it deacceleration period, I, when I am want to retard the speed of the engine. Now, when, when I want to retard the engine, so 90, the vehicle is running, it will come at 85, 84, 80 like that, right? During that time, I want to reduce the speed, but fuel is still going to the engine. Carburetor will give the fuel, okay? But I don't need fuel at that time. It may be possible, I may be applying brake also, but fuel is still going. So this concept is known as fuel cutoff, because I don't need 
so I say, okay, I don't need fuel. Cut off the fuel supply during this period from the carburetor. That is very difficult and even not precisely possible. That is again a limitation of the carburetor. In injection system, I can do it because I will give the command to the issue. I will develop a strategy in the control strategy. Okay, when the deacceleration is there, you cut off the fuel. I, I cut off the in, injector. There is no supply to the injector. So, injector will close, it will not open, no supply. And even I can make a strategy when I need again the fuel. Suppose I need at 30 km per hour speed. Again, I want to accelerate. Again, it will start automatically. So, that is there. So, I think now you are better acquainted why air fuel ratio has a significant impact on the power fuel consumption, on the power, on the engine emissions characteristics like flame speed, flame temperature and combustion pressures and at the same time emissions also. So, with this it means you can realize it means there is a need to control the air paint fuel ratio very accurately, very precisely. This is a very simple throttle body injection system. In this there is a throttle body and instead of carburetor, I am using a injector. This injector is mounted in the central part of the throttle body where you can see the spray. Spray is taken place in the throttle body itself. So, injector is located just above the throttle well in the throttle body. This system operates at low pressure around 1 bar. Therefore, fuel, me fuel metering at lower cost due to inexpensive fuel pump. So, in this system we do not require fuel pump. The pressure difference only what I have done, I have done a located a injector in the throttle body. So, instead of that jet, I have replaced that jet with a injector which is controlled by the current. Now, we have covered one part fuel. Now, only if I am giving the fuel, how to start the combustion? That is another part. That part is, it means I have to create a spark at the appropriate time. How to do that? When to do that? What should be the duration? And what should be the energy of the spark so that it can create the combustion? Earlier, the system, what we call the contact breaker type, there the limitation is that we have the breaker mechanical point and the current is passing through that. There was ignition coil. When it is opening, the secondary voltage is produced. That is around 15,000 volts and like that. Because it is a ignition coil, it is like a transformer. There is a primary winding, there is a secondary winding. But that interruption is done by the mechanical breaker point. That is why if you go for the tuning, they set the mechanical point and, uh, and when it is opening, little spark is created. So, to avoid that damage, we are limited, we cannot avoid, we cannot increase the primary current. Hence, our secondary voltage is produced always, not what we want, it is less. So, that was the limitation of the mechanical type of basic ignition system. And to burn the fuel properly, completely, we need appropriate amount of ignition energy. Secondly, that mechanical point after some times, after 20,000, after uh, 10,000 kilometers of running, that pitting starts and the performance further reduces. So, this Secondary voltage production is reduced, the 
आउटपुट इज नॉट सस्टेनेबल नॉट स्टेबल ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दैट वॉज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द इग्निशन सिस्टम बिकॉज आई नीड फ्यूल एयर एंड फ्यूल रेशियो एंड आई नीड द इग्निशन सिस्टम टू बर्न दैट सो दैट इज अनदर पार्ट सो अर्लियर वी वर यूजिंग द बेसिक इग्निशन सिस्टम नाउ इंजन मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम विल ऑल्सो कंट्रोल द इग्निशन टाइमिंग एंड इग्निशन एनर्जी so the engine management system not only control the amount of fuel to be injected but amount of ignition energy and time of ignition so this is a what we call engine management system and how it is done that we will discuss now why all this has been done if you look at the emission just to give a background bharat stage 1 we call it bs1 or euro 1 co was 2.72 gram per kilometer Euro 2 was it was reduced to 2.2, and in BS4 it is 1. Similarly, HC is reduced, and NOx is also reduced. So this pressure on the emissions reduction, carburetor cannot do. So that's why we need a. Now I will start the engine management system. Now this system can be categorized into four parts. air intake system where air is coming fuel delivery system fuel is coming different sensors and engine control module that is ecu now let's look at the air intake system you can understand it is like a nose i am inhaling from here so you know even in our nose there is a filter system is working which will hold all the dust of the air there are small small fibers inside the nose so they remove that dust here we are using a air cleaner which clean the air and before going to the engine so we call it air filter then from air filter the air is passing through the throttle body and if engine is supercharged or turbocharged then it will pass through that also otherwise it is going to the engine so intake system comprises of the air filter and throttle body now air filter why we want to use air filter so that if dirty air will go it will damage the engine the life wear and tear will be very high and engine will cease it it it, it will damp the device also if you remove the air cleaner noise will increase that is also another benefit but i am if i am using a air cleaner i have to clean it after some time because dirt will be there so when i should clean it how much dust it can hold that is a design parameter that we call it dust holding capacity how much dust it can absorb in new filter the pressure drop because whenever we are putting any filter there will be a pressure drop across that so there is that is around around 1 kilopascal and filtration efficiency is generally we keep more than 98% so most of the dirt should be removed now there are different type of design it is side mounted central mounted paper type of filter we use papers filter papers to clean the air and you have seen some oil bath type of filter also oil bath type of filters are used in buses and trucks where the dirt amount is very high in tractors also and paper type filter is used in motorcycle and in passenger cars now come to the throttle body the throttle body actually controls the amount of air your accelerator pedal when you are accelerating that is controlled by amount of air is controlled by the throttle you see you can see that valve air coming is coming from the air cleaner side then it is going to the engine so that that this is the valve so when it opens more air is allowed and generally from your interest point of view this throttle bodies are made of either of aluminum or of plastics
so it controls the amount of air on the throttle body we are mounting the throttle position sensor which indicate how much throttle is opened and it gives as a input to the ecu we call it throttle position sensor now very interesting one thing like suppose your car is at idling and you have switched on the ac when you switch on the ac you are not pressing the pedal but in load increases so when load increases who provide the extra air and extra fuel so for that we are putting a idle air control valve and which is integrated in the throttle body only or sometimes it is separate also so when or there is a load extra load during idling that is taken care by the idle air control system this is idle control valve so you need more air during idling in this condition throttle is not throttle is constant so there is a bypass if you can see there is a bypass the valve will open and allow more or less air from the bypass so that system works through the electronics through the ecu and that strategy we have to develop that strategy when to open how much to open so this for this we can use two type of system either stepper motor we can use so stepper motor i give the current it will more open more and more steps I, or i can use you know uh, there is a there is a flap type of valve that can also be used so different company uses different type of valves this is the duty ratio how much air flow is required and that is the duty ratio of the this is idle air control valve if it is open more more duty we call it more duty ratio means that if the capacity is 100% and it is working with 100% capacity duty ratio is 100 if it is completely closed zero duty ratio if it is 10% it means utilization is 10% so it depends how much engine is required i may open it 10% 20% 30% depend upon the need of the engine now air intake system so there is a air cleaner throttle body and idle speed control valve now come to the fuel delivery system we have the fuel pump then we have the we need fuel filter like air air filter we need we have to clean the fuel then we need a fuel pressure regulator because we want that fuel what it should go to the injector it should be at constant pressure if the pressure will be varying then the quantity which you are injecting that may vary so here i can give you a uh, experimental data in cars we use around 2.9 bar of pressure like maruti alto use 2.9 kg per centimeter square fuel pressure so pressure regulator is giving the fuel at a constant pressure of 2.9 so fuel pump is working between 3 to 4 bar then the pressure is maintained by the fuel pressure fuel filter cleans the fuel fuel pressure regulator maintain the pressure of the fuel delivery pipe suppose there are three cylinder injector i have to mount three injector so that we call it a delivery pipe or fuel rail so this is the schematic fuel pump let me understand about the fuel pump requirement it should be capable to work between minus 40 to 80 degree celsius now why it is so important i tell you the first car this uh, hyundai has launched in india with injection system in 99 and when this car was 
launched with the electronic fuel injection system there are many complaints the car was standing on the roads they are not you know running when they they analyze what is the problem you know what was the problem the problem was and they were working in korea japan everywhere because the fuel pump was designed it was working at a temperature of maximum up to 50 degree celsius in india summer is very hot and the temperature of the fuel tank goes above 50 degree celsius because the fuel is going to the engine then coming back extra fuel so that also increase the at the heat in the and atmosphere temperature is suppose 46 it means it will in, increase the there is no heat exchange so it will increase and if the temperature is going beyond 50 the fuel pump start malfunctioning it don't works so fuel is not going to the engine and vehicle stops so that's why this specification that's why we have mentioned the pump should be capable to deliver the fuel from minus 40 to 80 degree celsius maintain the desired flow rate at rated voltage maintain fuel system pressure of 3 to 5 bar and it should be capable to meet all type of vibrations in the vehicle because when you are mounting in the vehicle the tank it is under vibrations so under vibration it should be capable to deliver right now one more important i would like to tell you do you know where is the pump is mounted most of the people you are sometimes you have sit in a car you might have driven a car do you know where this pump is mounted inside the वहां पे ना इंजन के साइड में वी वर माउंटिंग द फ्यूल पंप ऑफ ए कार्बोरेटेड यू आर आइट द कार्बोरेटर फ्यूल पंप आर माउंटेड नियर द इंजन देयर इट इज अ मैकेनिकली ड्रिवन बट दिस पंप इज नॉट माउंटेड नियर द इंजन यू सी व्हाई आई एम टेकिंग दिस एग्जांपल यू सी दिस इज वेरी सिंपल थिंग राइट बट यू नो समटाइम्स वी वी नेवर think about all these things we are using a car maybe i may be a mechanical engineer i may be electronic engineer or even i may be a customer of the car i am use i am a user of the car you know when we start in a different thinking mode even thinking is an art most of the people we, we don't know how to think they say otherwise you suppose somebody don't know how to swim so if we don't know learn the swimming he cannot swim if you don't know the cycling you can't cycle if you don't know how to drive a car you cannot drive even thinking is an art your apple was fall due to gravity on the earth i think before newton everybody has seen that no apple or mango or uh, any fruit or any you know, putting you anything from your uh, it is falling on the ground only what was big thing in that everybody has seen that but newton has think in a different way right am i right so so it is a observations when we are sitting in a car or i am i am traveling in a car So I am idle at that time, or I am sitting in a bus, even CNG bus. So you can think about some concept also. So even in Japan, the system is when we have learned in 1999 about this engine management system. So first question was just to identify the components where they are located, and you will be surprised. Even among the faculty member. most of the faculty member even today if we open a car we okay the car is standing there and if i ask 
locate all the parts of the engine management system. We may not be able to do that. Where the which part is located? Forget about the fundamentals and concept. Most of the people are not able to do that. So prerequisites that is the difference between our education system and little bit Japanese or German education system. They are more practice and practical oriented. We are more theoretical based. We teach okay fuel pump this, it's a pressure like that. So that's why to break that concept, we give the example always. We try to demonstrate. So that's why this today test bench has been. I have bought this test bench so that I can show how this injector looks like, how the crank sensor is look like, what is TPS? It is a bird. It is an animal. It is a some electrical device. It is a mechanical device. You you can feel. Then you will be more confident about that. So this pump is mounted inside the fuel tank, and there is a very special requirement of this pump. Because if the pump is mounted, it is electrical operated. If any spark is created, it may cause a blast. No, so it is you know then then one should think oh it is yeah it is very dangerous also, and suppose because. Always there will be some fuel in the fuel tank, but it is not. It cannot be mounted directly on the floor. There should be some gap, maybe 10 mm or 15 mm, so that it cannot suck the dirt. You know, there is a filter also at the bottom end. If the fuel is lower than that, the fuel pump is not able to suck that. That is called dry operation. Even during designing a pump. we have to give the specification if the car is empty driver fuel gauge is not working you don't know how much fuel is and it stop the running the car you don't know what is the problem and there is suppose no fuel what you will do you will try to start the car when you will try to start the car where as he switch on the ignition switch the pump will work but there is no fuel it will start it start rotating and at that time the spark created in the armature and rotor and because some fuel is always there in the tank but pump is not able to lift that because it is at a very low level that is very or pump will short circuited it may cause a blast so we have a test known as dry operation test if you run the pump without fuel at least for 5 minutes is it should not give the spark you know what we think what is technology what is this when what we learn and what we teach we should go with the practical aspect of that even what size of wire we should use even if the suppose car is you met an accident and car is tilted and in accident engine your ignition is on always right because you are driving and suddenly something happen you are struggling with your life you you don't have time to switch off that the pump is working still even that condition is also to be taken care that we call is and if car is inclined like this car is rolling we call is roll over switch is there that will not allow the any fuel to go out so the tank that will not allow the fuel it will cut out the fuel to the engine it will when the car is tilted and met with an accident so they should not because now car is not running but engine is running so it may cause some fire and all that so what i want that fuel should not go to the engine right so that provision as a designer i have to give for the safety of the people for the safety of the passengers so the, you know there are very very minute things which we have to consider 
this is the internal structure of the pump it has a motor assembly and then check wall is there relief wall is there now coming to the fuel filter you know now i am just discussing for few minutes for fuel filter but there is a you can do lot of phd on fuel filter what side holes of the paper should be there what should be the pore size even new concept is coming in fuel filter that is a nano nano fiber now we are using nano fiber to make the fuel filters where the pressure drop should be minimum if high high quality of fuel you want to make there should not be any dirt in that even nano particles should not be there there are plant there are companies who are working only on fuel filter only so mean pore size is 8 to 12 micron of the this and flow rate and efficiency of the fuel filter is generally 90% but now they are demanding more they say it should be 95 98 so we have covered fuel filter fuel pump now fuel pressure regulator fuel pressure regulator just try to maintain the pressure at a constant outlet pressure even if i want to talk on fuel pressure regulator i can spend only one hour in that only but the our purpose is to have a look at the total and complete engine management system so we may not go at the design aspect of each and everything delivery pipe is you can see it is a fuel rail where the injectors are mounted this also in demo section we will show this to you now fuel injector you will be surprised in india there is even as on date no company who is making the fuel injector it is such a precise technology and concept even no company is making engine management system now this injector making itself is a all uh, all big shot can combine together and they can try to work on that but simply by i am talking okay fuel injector the solenoid wall when i give the supply it opens when i open fuel is injected for 3 millisecond for 4 millisecond for 10 millisecond and when i am not giving the supply so it this no it means we think oh i know the fuel injector but i know the function of this the purpose of the injector i do not know the design aspect of the injector i do not know the features of the injectors the hole which i am making it that is even less than millimeters so to make that hole to make that assembly this plant of this this is a company called denso japan they put the plant if you will see that plant you are not allowed to go inside that plant with your bare head without goggles and without covering your body because if very nano particle is also when during assembly it goes inside the internal structure it may spoil the performance of the injector the people who are doing the assembly if you will see that line before that you have to pass four stages which are totally clean environment first they will wash you with the clean air then they will take you apron complete cover your body then they will cover your head they will cover your eyes they will cover your they will give gloves also after cleaning different stages then you can enter there and in entering there you cannot enter with the assembly there is a glass you can see from that outside nobody is allowed to your shoes you you have to okay shoes basically you have to remove the shoes you have to take their own internal etc so that type of precision is required and you cannot see the operation of this injector with your neck dies i think in 20 second 80 operations are done the robotic which is moving you can't track that because you have to produce in millions if like in india suppose we are producing around 20 lakhs cars in each car average you are using three injector 20 lakhs into 3 60 lakhs every years precision 
and this is only OE requirement and spare requirement, so maybe 10 millions. So when we are talking about this concept, so one is knowing the principles, second is implementing that principles. So even the question, okay, locate the injector in the car. So people are looking this, where is the injector? Locate the current position sensor in the car. I am teaching in the institute, okay, this is a current position sensor. So if, if principle is Hall effect sensor is given. What is Hall effect? Okay, you may go through the theory. How it looks? What is the shape? Where it is mounted? In which location it is mounted? In which environment it is working? When I am mounting the injector, you know, when we are talking about the sensors, so the gap between the tooth wheel and sensor, it is in, you know, very precisely controlled in 0 0.1 mm, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 1.1. And if there is a change in that, your, your performance may change. And if the gap is changed significantly, then you may not get the output signal even. Your car will stop because that is the most fundamental signal. If I am changing the tooth profile, how it will affect that? So all these things will happen when... So this is a, one exercise, I think, I don't know, in studio it is not possible, but sometimes we have a, uh, we can, we can take the participant near the car and we can give exercise, okay, identify and locate each and every component of the engine management system, where it is located and why it is located there. So even identification is one exercise, which may take few hours. So for fuel injector, you know, the flow rates are very important. We have test bench to calculate the flow rate and all that. We, we measure the quantity of the fuel to be injected, we measure it in a time frame. There is spray angle, again there is an engineering in that, whether it should be 15 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree. Now another point is, when I should inject, it is a synchronous injection, asynchronous injection, this we will cover little bit and it is timed injection when I am cranking the car I don't want that it should take injection at one time only I want that in during intake stop it should occur at three times tick 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 and during running of the car it should inject only once tick, 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 at every stroke so there are different strategy when temperature is very low because if I am injecting one time the mixture preparation will not be good so I have to give the dose at every certain millisecond. So these are the control strategy. Like start injection volume. It means when I am, there are two basic things. One is the basic duration of injection. That is, I have given in a table, calculated, but I have calculated under a certain controlled conditions. Suppose I have done at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and when the car is driven, the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. So how to compensate that? Or it is winter, 0 degrees Celsius. So air density will change. If air density will change, the temp fuel requirement will change. Fuel requirement will change. So we have to add the compensation for all these things. So first is the basic injection duration and then I have to use the correction coefficient which is different you can just see this is the correction coefficient start of injection duration fixed correction coefficient depending upon the temperature cranking battery voltage reduces it is not 12 volt it may go to 10 volt at that time also it will affect that electronics so I have to compensate for that and there may be many many correction factor like this I am just telling you the fundamentals of this So my total injection duration will be basic duration of injection plus correction coefficient due to temperature, due to battery, due to humidity, due to altitude. I am going at Simla. 
Now, atmospheric pressure will reduce. How it will affect? I, I have fixed here when the car was running, I was giving a duration of injection 3.5 millisecond. When I am at Simla, should I give 3.5? No, sir. It will not work if I have gone to lay. It will not work. I have to give the. So there is a altitude compensation is there. You know that engine management system, it is such a typical subject and such a challenging that in the world there are three or four companies all over the world which are doing this. And not only in India, I think in India or in this region, no one is there. It is from Japan, it is from Germany, it is from USA and it is from Europe. Italy. There are four companies broadly, so major player. Because it requires the understanding of the engine, it requires the understanding of the sensors, actuators, software, hardware. So all these things are required. So these are the compensation which we are talking about. Correction and coefficient start during starting wh what I should do during warm up what should I do during temperature air correction what should I do transient time what should I do if I need suddenly more power what I should do that is another enrichment air fuel is a feedback correction idle stabilization high altitude correction which I am talking just now and fuel cutoff during deacceleration period which I am talking if the car is running at a hundred kilometer per hour speed you are suddenly deaccelerating fuel should cut off completely that strategy also will learn. And for how much time it should be cut off? Till 50 kilometer, till 40 kilometer cut off speed, vehicle speed or 30. And you should not feel a jerk. So these transient conditions, they are very complicated. And you have to simulate that. You have to integrate all these things in your programming in the EC. So these are different enrichments, warm up enrichment and all that. Warm up enrichment means when there is a cold, your, you can see coolant temperature, warm up coefficient. So, the value is more than 1, it means your duration of injection should increase. And uh, when it completely warm up, it is multiplied by 1. 1 means basic is equal to 4.3 into 1. If I want to increase that multiplication factor will be more than 1. So, for all the correction factor, we are using in the same way. This is the temperature correction, transient time, air fuel ratio correction, power enrichment, again duration of injection increases when you need the more power. Now, I am coming to the sensors, fuel cutoff during deacceleration, I have just discussed this. So, whenever deacceleration, first thing, now I have spoken you cut off fuel supply during deacceleration. But the first thing, how you identify this is a deacceleration. That is again a control strategy. How ECU knows the engine is now deacceleration mode and I should cut off it? Which type of signal I have to use? which is giving precisely this information correctly. Another interesting thing, earlier you know, when you are pressing the accelerator pedal, engine will increase the speed. But there is a high, I say the engine should not go beyond 6000 RPM, otherwise it is dangerous. So, in the ECU we are giving a provision, okay, if the RPM are above 6000, it will cut off the fuel supply. So, engine cannot worry. If 6, 1, double 0, it just crosses, it will cut off, it will come down. Okay. So, that, that, that protection is there to the engine. And all this thing is done by the engine sensors. You have different type of sensors. This is a, itself is a very vast area. You have manifold absolute pressure sensor, 
you have throttle position sensor, you have inner coolant temperature sensor, you have intake air temperature sensor, what is the principle of their operation, what type of characteristics they are there. Now this only, not only this, suppose I know the characteristics, then I have to use this equation in the software to correlate that. Then crank position sensor, cam position sensor and oxygen sensor better. All these sensors during the after lunch, we will show you each and every sensor. We will show you the demonstration of each and every sensor so that you can have a feel of that. Their output will be shown, their characteristics will be discussed and their behavior will be also shown to you. I think the sensors, uh, uh, I should continue, it is 1 o'clock or uh, uh, because then uh, we can just give touch up little bit theory and then we will just sit there because it will be then you know face to face that and we have lunch time also. In the meantime, I think uh, you can get ready this test bench. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, break, for lunch. break for lunch now and we will meet again sharp at 2 o'clock. At that time we will discuss all type of different sensors and we will explain you on the demo test bench the behavior, the outcome of all these sensors. Thank you. हाँ तो मैं अब यहीं पे लूँ कर लेंगे भैया अब आप तैयार कर लो है ना
हेलो हेलो ये ये चंडीगढ़ वाले सुनेंगे ना आप नहीं आ रहे हो हेलो हेलो
Okay, so we will have uh, three items to display whenever I will say one, two, three. So this is the power supply, this is the test setup, and this is the oscilloscope. Okay. So first few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, I am covering the theoretical aspect of all these sensors. Yeah, then once you go on the equipment, then you will not be coming back here. Um, I may come sometime, but
एक मिनट Okay. Good afternoon. Hope everybody is there after having a lunch. Now, in this session, we will discuss about the different sensors which are being used in the engines and in automotive. Their principle of working, their characteristics. I will develop upon all this theoretical aspect of these sensors. and at the same time then we would like to discuss all the practical aspects and we have a test bench here where we will discuss about each and every sensors how it operates what are the design parameters for that and even i will discuss the location of the sensors where it is fitted in the vehicle let's start with the manifold absolute pressure sensor as the name indicate that this sensor is used to measure the vacuum basically in the intake manifold because in the intake manifold the pressure is always less than atmospheric so that's why we call it absolute pressure sensors absolute means it start from the zero so zero to 100 is 0 to 100 kilopascal 100 kilopascal is equal to one atmospheric and the principle of operation of this sensor is piezo resistive type it has a bridgestone type circuit inside so whenever there is a you know change in resistance of any arms because when the vacuum will be created then this there is a change physical changes that physical change is converted into resistance and resistance will vary so it means vacuum or pressure is directly proportional to the change in the value of the map sensor resistance vary voltage vary so this change in the physical position is converted into the voltage for this we have developed a equation between the pressure versus voltage now for example now here i can use the crusher here now if you look at the graph this is between output voltage and pressure now the range of this sensor is generally from 10 kilopascal to 120 kilopascal the lower limit is around 10 kilopascal where you can see this is can i have the crusher or like something like this so that i can display or i can move the crusher here on this how how okay yeah now it is coming now yeah i think i can use this now this is vacuum so here the vacuum is here the pressure is 0 kilopascal 
and atmosphere means the pressure is 100 kilopascal as the pressure increases the voltage at this point now i am going to tell you the typical voltage here the voltage is around 1.2 volts as the pressure increases at atmosphere the voltage may be around 4.2 volt approximately so it means i am able to judge based on the voltage what is the manifold absolute pressure in the engine this sensor is mounted map sensor as name indicate manifold absolute pressure sensor so this sensor is mounted on the intake manifold sometimes this sensor is mounted on the throttle body also in a very small engines but the throttle body is because it is connected and mounted on the intake manifold so basically it measures the absolute pressure inside the intake manifold of the engine let's come to the tps tps is throttle position sensor it is a variable potentiometer type sensor and now there are two type on this one is the contact type suppose i have a resistance so it is a contact type i am by the by the moment i am wearing the resistance the new concept which is coming in the new engines that is a non contact type because in automotive engine what is happening you know every moment when you are pressing the accelerator pedal this resistance is varying so in contact time frequent contact going this 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 may cause wear and tear and after some time it start misbehaving so to achieve the high level of durability and accuracy now we are going to non contact type right but the fundamental is similar like you can see by this i am wearing the resistance right if i am moving this over this so resistance will vary and accordingly voltage will vary here we can see the characteristics of the tps now again the good thing is about map sensor and tps is their characteristics is linear in nature so it is very easy to represent by the equation you can use the equation y is equal to mx plus c as a straight line right so in this tps now this position is fully closed fully closed means the engine is stationary you are not pressing the accelerator pedal fully closed right at this position the voltage output is generally here i am talking about this position so at this position the voltage is around 0.8 volt so 0.8 volt is representing throttle position is closed or idle case idly next when i press the accelerator pedal full full throttle then the position is represented by the fully open position this right an in between position that will be represented by the relative position of the throttle valve voltage here is 0.8 volt so 0.8 volt is equivalent to idling and here it is around 4 volt or 4.2 volts that is equal to wide open throttle it means your throttle is pressed fully accordingly if it is half open maybe 2.1 volt 3 volt accordingly it can be just so this sensor is used to help in calculating the load of the engine this tps along with the map sensor now come to the engine coolant temperature sensor this is used to measure the temperature of the engine that is the coolant basically engine temperature is represented by measuring the temperature of the 
वाटर और कूलेंट विच इज सर्कुलेटेड अराउंड द इंजन राइट नाउ देर आर डिफरेंट प्रिंसिपल डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेंसर आर अवेलेबल बट इन ऑटोमोटिव सेक्टर वी आर यूजिंग एन टी सी टाइप ऑफ सेंसर दीज आर बेस्ड ऑन यू नो अगेन रजिस्टेंस विल वेरी बट एन टी सी मीन्स नेगेटिव टेम्परेचर कोफिशियंट सो मीन्स एज द टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस एज द टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस द रजिस्टेंस विल टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस रजिस्टेंस विल डिक्रीज सो हियर वी कैन जस्ट सी एज द टेम्परेचर इज increasing this is the correct is now here the temperature is when i have started the engine it is 25 degree celsius so when this temperature is 25 the resistance is suppose 80 kilo ohm and when it is heated up 80 degree celsius the resistance has come down again the relationship is somewhat linear not exactly linear we have to develop this relationship by adding some resistance and all that so the characteristics of this which i have shown it is theoretical it is not exactly linear iit is also same ect it based you know one important things suppose i am measuring the air temperature of the engine i am measuring the coolant temperature of the engine and i may be measuring the exhaust temperature of the engine so as a designer i should understand first what is the range of the temperature which i am going to measure then i have to select the appropriate sensor for that for engine the temperature may go up to minus 10 minus 20 if i am running the engine at leh ladakh like the gypsy which is produced the they are using in leh so the temperature in severe condition is minus 30 degree celsius so it means the sensor which i am using that should be capable to give the output at minus 30 degree celsius and it should be accurate enough the maximum temperature because i have to define the boundary conditions even this is true for all type of applications boundary conditions okay my boundary condition so practical aspect i take if it is minus 30 then i took it minus 40 giving some margin then next is maximum temperature of the engine of the coolant do you know how much it can reach any idea it may generally it should not go more than under 10 degree celsius generally if engine is overheated it may go 120 130 but safe engine operation is around 110 degree celsius right so i know minimum side minus 40 maximum side 150 or 140 so i will choose a sensor which is suitable for this range of temperature application now come to the air temperature sensor what can be the temperature of the air again there i have to think about the range and this sensor engine coolant temperature sensor is mounted in the coolant gallery where water is circulated and this sensor iat is in the intake manifold now we are coming to the crank shaft position sensor this sensor is we use different type of we have either magneto resistive we have inductive type we have hall effect type of principles any sensors can be used which is rugged which is stable which is durable now this crank position sensor indicate me the location about the piston and in identifying the top dead center when the piston has reached the top dead center so how we get it that idea to the ecu so it is given by the 
crank position sensor it gives the position of the piston it identify the top dead center and it also used to calculate the speed of the engine how to calculate that that again we will do experimentally on the test bench came position sensor again this is a similar type hall effect magnetoresistive or inductive type this sensor is mounted on the came shaft now here crank position sensor and came position sensor i will elaborate this with the help of the test bench why both sensor are used and what is the relationship between crank sensor outcome and came sensor out now here if i would like to emphasize if from any center there is any query any questions you may please ask now because the sensors after this i am going to demonstrate on the test bench so that if there is any question you can put now and subsequently we can put on the test bench we will show the outcome of the sensors the physical shape of the sensor the location of the sensors the location of the tooth wheel and the relationship between the crank and came position sensor because these two sensors i am telling you suppose i am using nine sensor out of nine sensor if iat is not working no problem sir ECT is no working, no problem. Engine will run, vehicle will run with a ninety-five percent accuracy. If map is not working, engine will work. If oxygen sensor is not working, engine will work. If crank position sensor or cam position sensor is not working, you cannot drive the car. You cannot run the engine. This is the very basic signal. so the most important and critical sensors are came position and crank position so you know we have talked a lot about air fuel ratio right you understand that amount of air amount of fuel stoichiometric rich and lean and this is what oxygen sensor we call it also lambda sensor it is a sensor which measure which give the idea what is the air fuel ratio going to the engine that is the idea it is taking suppose if it is going rich as per my requirement then i will make it lean but i should know what is the air fuel ratio so oxygen sensor is also known as the feedback sensor because suppose i i give an example okay at 1500 rpm of the engine when the vehicle is running at 40 km per hour speed i want a air fuel ratio of 14.6 means lambda should be 1.001 i want that but how much is that how i know this sensor will tell me this is the lambda suppose it gives me value okay lambda value is 0.95 it means it is rich so what i command i will give in my control strategy based on the feedback of the lambda sensor okay now you correct it you increase the you reduce the fuel quantity because you have to make it lean so earlier my pulse width injection duration was suppose 3.8 millisecond so it will adjust it will make it 3.7 or 3.65 why so that the targeted lambda value can be met by varying the duration of injection so this is the purpose of this sensor and this is heated oxygen sensor that most difficult part is in the cold condition this sensor doesn't work so you will not get what is the air fuel ratio because this sensor works only when the temperature is around 300 degree celsius so when you are starting 
in the morning how you will do and when we are doing the emissions you know euro 2 euro 3 euro 4 do you know there is a driving cycle when I am testing on the chassis dynamometer there is a driving cycle I have to run the car under certain speed and load conditions first gear 20 kilometers then 30 then 40 like that when I am driving that car at that time I want that oxygen sensor should work in the beginning only from the idling only but it will work when the temperature is 300 degrees Celsius so to avoid that in during that period I cannot do the correction to avoid that recently we have started what is known as heated oxygen sensor heated means I have put two more wires through the issue I will give the command that when the as soon as you ignition on the switch the current will flow through the heater first even before cranking and within few seconds that is high wattage heater that will heat the oxygen sensor and when you crank you will find that the oxygen sensor is working and this is a very critical sensor even you know there is a concept of uh, OBD OBD you know what is OBD it is on board diagnostic system if there is a problem anywhere in the emissions fuel economy is poor then the error should come on the dashboard of the car so for OBD purpose again related to the emissions we are using two oxygen sensor one for feedback another for OBD purpose so that is you know next level thing today we will discuss only the very basic so it operates on the principle of a galvanic oxygen concentration cell with electrolyte that is Nernes principle for a function it is necessary to have a temperature of around 300 to 350 degrees Celsius it depends upon the design to design but that is a range type of oxygen sensor unheated oxygen sensor which I told you for quick warm up we can use the heated oxygen sensor or preheated oxygen sensor which is operating at around 12 to 14 volts battery operated so this is the material zirconium and titanium platinum coated inner and outer surface can also used for this sensor oxygen sensor voltage is varying between 0.1 to 0.9 volt this is the type of signal you can see if the mixer is rich here you will get 0.9 volt if mixer is lean you will get 0.1 volt so and so from rich to lean lean to rich rich to lean it keep on doing like this in a short band so this is the output of the oxygen sensor I told you between 0.9 to 0.1 volt battery voltage is also given as the uh, input and now I would like to answer if any person from any sensor has any question related to the sensors they can raise the question now because after this I am going to demonstrate on the test bench which we have bring here in the studio any question please if there is no question may I go to the test bench okay I hope things are clear to most of the people and now let I start yes 
या यस प्लीज ओके फ्रॉम एनी ऑफर सेंसर फ्रॉम अबाउट एनी सेंसर फ्रॉम एनी सेंटर एनी क्वेश्चन इट मीन्स वी कैन गो ए हेड विद द डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन नाउ या वेरी जनरिक क्वेश्चन प्रॉपरली डोंट डिफाइन एनी थिंग एनी वे दट आई ए टी मीन्स इनलेट एयर टेम्परेचर सेंसर the purpose of this sensor is to measure the temperature of the inlet air which is going to the engine now why we use this sensor because the density of the air that changes with the temperature the density of air at ntp is around 1.18 if the temperature is 0 degree celsius density of the air will increase if the temperature is 40 degree celsius that density of the air will reduce and that will change the mass of the air which engine has sucked in so it is nct type of temperature sensor the resistance of this sensor varies according to the temperature as the resistance varies voltage also varies so we are monitoring the voltage and resistance with respect to the temperature and a relationship is being developed between the temperature and the voltage right right sir thank you sir okay okay now if uh, there is no question i would like to go to the test bench hello yeah hello yes please So we are talking about air fuel ratio. Are uh, you want to know about air fuel ratio? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, my question is uh, that you have told earlier about the various ratios that the coal is producing by seven and diesel is producing by. Uh huh. Uh, how we can calculate air fuel ratio? How? Uh, like for standard for petrol is producing by seven, for diesel is producing by two. Ah, okay. So, so your question is how it is calculated? Yeah, how it is calculated? Okay. Very simple, very basic. It is a chemistry. The formula of gasoline or petrol is used as it is C N H two N plus two means C eight H eighteen. The, that is the chemical formula of a gasoline. Approximately, it is not very accurate, but it is approximately because it depends upon some chemical also. But it is accepted H C eight H eighteen. So it is the category of alkanes. That is C N H two eight plus two. So C N H two C eight H eighteen multiply by oxygen, it will produce C O two plus H two O. So I have to balance the equation and by by balancing then you will calculate how many molecules of oxygen you are reacting with the c at h18 and this balancing of this equation will give you the air fuel ratio exactly this will give you the oxygen and fuel ratio then you multiply by that 3.71 because in the air oxygen is only 21% and you calculate the amount of air and it is very simple calculation on website everywhere it is available in most of the books it is available so it is based on the chemical equation of the petrol plus oxygen it is a reactant to product balance the reactant and product you will get the air fuel ratio okay any question
ओके द लैमडा एंड इक्वेलेंस रेशियो आर जस्ट टू यूज टू आइडेंटिफाई वेदर द मिक्सर इज रिच और मिक्सर इज लीन दैट्स ऑल लाइक ऑक्सीजन सेंसर इज अ लैमडा सेंसर इट विल इंडिकेट what is the lambda value if lambda is less than 1 mixture is rich if lambda is more than 1 mixture is lean any question from any center any question please okay now i think we can we can go to the test bench and if there is any questions we can answer later on now first i would like to explain the different part of the system this is a electronic fuel injection test bench which is fabricated designed and developed to demonstrate all the different sensor their location their counterpart their associated part this is the power supply because most of the sensor they require 5 volt or 12 volt so this give the supply and then we have the oscilloscope to display different signal and outcome of the different sensor now first i would like to start from the crank position sensor this is the crank position sensor and this is mounted in front of the crank tooth wheel this is the crank tooth wheel you can see the crank tooth wheel and you can see the different tooth on the crank tooth wheel the number of tooth the width of tooth and the height of the tooth is a very important aspect it is not just uh, we have just make like that the width the depth all is important next number of teeth on the crank tooth wheel it also very critical in this design which has been created we have 36 number of teeth it means in one revolution there will be 36 pulses 36 teeth are there now but if i keep regularly turn 36 i don't know what is the start point with every where it is same you know so to avoid that we miss the teeth you see you can see here there is no teeth here so this will give me the location in identification of the tdc or any other position because this give me a reference generally again it is safety of the engine design system i can use one missing tooth i can use two it is my control strategy which is embedded in the ecu so but one is a must rest it is your choice 
Now in this we have used 36 minus 2 minus 2. So two teeth are missing here, two teeth are missing here. So I have 10 here and almost 20 here, 22. 22, 10, 32, 2, 2, 4 are missing. Now this is mounted on the crankshaft of the engine. So this is the crankshaft of the engine. Again to make the things clear, we have designed a pulley gear also which is behind this gear and from this the power is transmitted to the cane gear. What is happening? The engine crankshaft because it rotates at 1000 rpm then cane shaft should run at 500 rpm means the relationship between crank speed and cam is 2 is to 1. The speed of this will be half. So this design of the gear is prepared accordingly. So number of teeth in this will be less in the crank tooth pulley. Now here you can see the cam tooth wheel. So in this cam tooth wheel we have 3 teeth equally at 120 degree crank angle but at one point we have two teeth again this is for the identification if I have the three so I do not know what is the location difference and this is my own design you can design you can make okay I want to three here or I want to here and what is the orientation and location that you can decide now please emphasize on these two aspects because these are very very important from the engine startability from the engine running of work. If this sensor working, your, your ECU detects your engine is running from this sensor only. If this is missing, if this signal is missing, nothing will work. Now you see we will focus on this. Now I am going to start the this crank and came truthfully and you can see this is the oscilloscope here we are displaying the signal now I just you can see the rotation of the crank and came wheel Your engine is working in front of you. Lab condition and in real condition because the sensors are the same sensor which is used in the car. The output you are getting, the real output, is not simulated output. The upper yellow line, you can see, even you can you can count it. There are 36 pulses will be here. You can see number of pulses are both here. And on the bottom side is giving the cane sensor output. I am changing the time scale. You can see this on the oscilloscope. And from these two pulses, we can understand the fundamentals of the relationship between came and crank. This is why it is important when I have to detect the TDC, when to inject, how long to inject. So all this calculation is done based on this. All the control that is based on it. Now you can here I am going to increase because this is a I told you it is like a real engine working. Now I am going to increase the speed of the engine and just watch it on the crank and came sharp fully. The speed is going to be increased.
our speed is going to be reduced. You need not to fire the engine. Sitting in your lab, sitting in your studio, you can see all the real process signaling, conditioning and display of the output of the sensor. of the engine, there are two revolutions of the crank. So two revolutions of the crank equal to one revolution of the cane. So here I can see both, then I can match it that the TDC is like that or not. Now, just I am again increasing the speed. See when I am increasing here the number of pulses are coming more fast. Let's see. So now I, again I am reducing. You can see the effect of reducing the speed. And now I am stopping my engine. I stopped the engine. Now I am going to discuss other sensors. Now these sensors, the output which has been displayed on the oscilloscope, this output actually will go to the ECU. As I told you, this is the most critical part of the engine, the relationship, the detection of the TDC, the detection of the piston position, these are very important aspects. So this will, if once you have done this, most of the, your work is done. Because these other sensors, they are the supporting set sensor. They are just helping in the correction of the signal, correction of the basic duration of injection. Now this sensor, here it is written T map, here in this air temperature and air pressure in the manifold is measured. So earlier we were using two sensors, IAT separately, map separately, but to reduce the cost of the sensor, it is integrated in this only. So now we have one sensor because both are mounted on the intake manifold. So I can integrate this and I can mount on the same position in the intake manifold and I can measure the temperature of the air which is going to the engine, the pressure of the air which is going to the engine. So again this signal will go to the PC. Now come to the next. Here I we have discussed engine coolant temperature sensor ECT. So this sensor is ECT and the behavior of this sensor is temperature versus resistance and voltage. So this again this signal will go to the EC and EC will process accordingly. Another sensor is the TPS total position sensor which is a variable resistance type. You can see the total position sensor here. Again this output you can display on the oscilloscope as you rotate it because there is no more physical movement in this sensor because these are temperature sensitive and all that. So these are very simple and rugged sensors. The most critical part is crank and cane. Now these are the sensor part. Another sensor, lambda sensor, we will just see if I have that. One more important thing I would like to tell you, the sensor which is mounted, the pulse which you have seen, this is all effect 
type sensor. This way you are getting the air pulse. Here there is a inductive type of sensor, this one in my hand. In this sensor, if I will put here and if I will rotate the wheel, then I will get the sinusoidal waves. So this sensor is also used. This sensor is also used. So this is the choice of the designer. And it is affected also by the cost. But different engine manufacturers like Maruti, they use polyfit or magnetoresistance type. In some cars like Tata Motors, they use inductive type. But most of the Japanese manufacturers, they use polyfit type, which I have shown the pulses and output signal of the sensor on the oscilloscope at different speed. Now come to the output side. This all the sensor input will go to the ECU and why I want to operate the objective is to operate the injector so that it can inject the appropriate quantity of fuel. The cut section which I have shown this is the gasoline injector, petrol injector. As I told you, this is a solenoid type. It is 12 volt operated. One is in input signal from the ECU. When the circuit is completed, it will on and it will off. The on time of this injector, you can see how precise. There are holes on this nozzle. If you can focus here, you can see the hole here and these holes are very very fine. The diameter is much much less than the 1 mm. Even if you think the technology is not available commonly to make a hole less than 1 mm diameter. So these are special techniques are used. Like so, the fuel is atomized from this small jet and this injector is mounted on the fuel rail which is this. Now I am mounting you this injector on the fuel rail. This is the seal. Now I am inserting the seal into the gas rail and just inserting the injector. You can see there are two ribs here. This connector and this ribs should be aligned perfectly. This ribs and this injector has to be aligned perfectly. You cannot make it like this. You cannot make it like this. And there are pins available that I will lock it here so that in the vehicle it will not move like this. Another important aspect, it is a multi-point, I have three injectors, one, two and three, third is in my hand. Again, I am putting this injector in the fuel rail. Practically, when I am doing this to mount in the engine, I am using a special type of gel over this. Because if micro size of dust will be here, it may cause the leakage. No dust is allowed on this seal. This is a very special seal. So I am using that silica gel. Then after using the silica gel, I am inserting this in the fuel rail. Now you can see the three injectors are mounted on the fuel rail. This fuel rail may be made of aluminium that is a pressure die casting or gravity die casting or it may be plastic also. 
नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज प्रेशर रेगुलेटर दिस इज द प्रेशर रेगुलेटर द प्रेशर द यूज इन द इंटेक मेन्यू दिस इज माउंटेड ऑन द फ्यूल रेल फ्यूल इज कमिंग फ्रॉम दिस साइड from the fuel tank fuel will come enter into the gas rail the fuel rail and the excess quantity of fuel will be returned from this line back to the tank because when the engine is at idling fuel requirement is very very low so fuel is very high in volume in amount so rest of the fuel will go back and this pressure regulator this side is connected to the vacuum of the intake manifold so there is a diaphragm in this which will operate and maintain the pressure around 2.9 kgf per centimeter square or 290 kilo pascal that is the pressure is being maintained in the pressure regulator excess fuel will return when the ecu will be at command the injector will operate which will switch on the injector and fuel is injected from the tip of the injector you have seen that now another important aspect now i am going to tell you this type of injector they are known as saturated injector they consume around 2 ampere of current and they are operating at 12 volt but you have seen vehicles running on gas also cng also lpg also in that i cannot use this injector for that to show you i have gas injector now this is the gas injector and this is the gas rail cng will come enter from here and pressure regulator is before the gas rail and there are three injector this is the outlet because gas now why is this is like this you can see in petrol it is very fine hole but in gas it is not fine why can you tell me pardon good gas is already in gas form i need not to optimize that there i need very fine because it is a, i have to convert that liquid into liquid droplet and liquid droplet into very fine vapors to make it in the gas form but here already it is in gas so that's why here i can put a nozzle of a size maybe 1 mm 1.8 mm 2.3 mm depending upon the size of the engine so this is mounted on the near the intake manifold from here the nozzle will go to the intake manifold one nozzle will go to cylinder number 1 next cylinder number 2 next cylinder number 3 similarly this is for cylinder number 1 cylinder number 2 and cylinder number 3 it means this gas rail is suitable for three cylinder engines now this is the fuel side i told you there are two side one is the mixer preparation which was done by the carburetor now it is done by the electronic injection system the duration of this injection may be varying from 2 millisecond to 18 millisecond depending upon the load and speed of the injector now come to the another part that is ignition you can see here we call it a integrated coil 
this coil is directly mounted on the engine near the cylinder and here you can see a spark plug. This is a spark plug. When I show spark plug, people think, okay, it is spark plug, but it is a technology behind it. Even in India, we are not able to produce this spark. It is a technology. You can see this side, it is called side electrode. And in the center, you can see that is called central electrode. And there is a gap between central and side electrode. And this gap is very important. Can you guess generally what is the gap in your car spark plug? In the spark plug of your motorcycle? Do you have any idea? The gap between the spark, everybody directly or indirectly is using engine. Everybody is. But everybody is not thinking about the concept. The gap between this spark plug electrode is around 0 0.8 eight millimeter. If plus minus I give a tolerance of 0 0.1 ml. Even you can do lot of research at PhD in varying the gap. There are PhD on this. There are maybe 100 papers on this. Research paper published in journals. But if you look at, okay, the cost is 100 rupees a spark plug. Okay. Again, same thing. Apple is fallen. How you perceive that? Spark plug is there. How to see it? Just say, on this channel, I have asked me, Arjun, you should see. What are you seeing on the page? Sir, everyone has said, I am seeing a page, a studio. सर मैं एक कहानी देख रहा हूँ कि ग्रीन लीव्स हैं और उसके बीच में एक चिड़िया बैठी हुई है। फिर किसी ने कहा, सर मैं उसकी टांगें भी देख रहा हूँ, पर भी देख रहा हूँ। राजू ने कहा, सर मेरे को तो चिड़िया की आंख दिख रही है, और मुझे कुछ से नहीं दिख रहा। तो नजरिया है सिर्फ देखने का। तो ये you can do and you can do experiment by varying this gap how it affects your fuel economy how it will affect your power of the engine how it affect your emissions of the engine how and why it affects if I will increase the gap why it is affecting why My dear friends, 3W1H is the concept, basic concept behind learning. 3W means why, when, where. And 1H is how. When this question arises in your mind, you will start thinking upon those and you will try to get an answer for that and it will make the matters more interesting for you so this ignition coil it produces approximately 25,000 volts battery in the car is 12 volt battery but this is capable to produce 25,000 volts minimum it may be 30 or 35,000 volts also 
how it is produced again it is a technology how it is controlled again it is a in there so this high voltage when it is passing through the central electrode and the side electrode is grounded it create a path if i will give you 12 volts do you think spark will occur no if 1000 volts no i can give more and more wider gap if i have a more voltage wider the gap more a you see the you know, very fine thing more the gap more will be the air and fuel ratio which will come in contact in this region between the electrode and the intensity of the combustion will be more if the gap will be less you will not be able to come between the two gaps so this gap is significant in meaning another meaning i am just touching upon i will not go in details even the height of this ground electrode side electrode it may be here it may be even like this it is also important we call it protrusion in this spark plug you are able to see only one ground electrode there may be two one from this side one is this like this and there may be four also so this is the design aspect to the spark but this is most commonly used and very cheap also so in this we have covered the ignition system ignition coil basically for display purpose i have used only one ignition coil you can use three ignition coil for three cylinder three spark plug three injector for three cylinder pressure regulator throttle position sensor temperature sensor manifold absolute pressure sensor engine coolant temperature sensor gain position sensor crank position sensor crank to wheel came to wheel relationship between crank and came relationship between crank speed and came speed and the importance of top dead center ignition timing and injection timing that all can be demonstrated on this test bench now i would like to ask and answer any question which you have in your mind so if anybody has any questions you would like to discuss that from any center any questions from any center Yes please Hello 
Yes, please. Uh, sir, I would like to ask uh, what will be the effect of multiple ground electrodes in a spark plug? Okay. Multiple electrodes, why we should use, when we should use. Basically, the researcher realized that when I am making the mixture lean, it improves the fuel economy. Lean burn engines are known to produce very good mileage and very good mileage and very low NOx because you make very lean NOx will also reduce CO will also reduce and fuel economy will also improve so but the combustion initiation the starting of the lean is very difficult because if it will be more and more air so combustion is firing is difficult then how to improve the firing there are two things for that number one you can use high energy ignition system that ignition coil should be capable to produce 20 to 30,000 or 40,000 volts another thing I can use a multi electrode spark plug like it is like that you are igniting you are you have a match stick you are burning two or three match stick at a time so that mixture is lean it can catch fire quickly and easily so that is the purpose behind usage of the multi electrode spark plug they are useful only in lean burn engine which are operating at an air fuel ratio of about 20 is to 1 there the utilities may be there even in petrol engine you can use that to enhance the performance hello. of the engine yes please hello yes uh, in case of uh, um, ice engines sensors is put on exhaust pipe so what is the life of uh, such a sensor uh, okay uh, may I also tell me which type of sensor is mounted on the exhaust pipe uh, uh, I, you are just telling that some sensor is put on exhaust pipe if I am correct no it is correct but I want to know which type of sensor is mounted on the exhaust pipe which uh, sensor uh, the type uh, I don't know okay and now I am going to tell you first we are mounting the exhaust sensor on the exhaust pipe that is one thing it is also known as lambda sensor and the life of the exhaust sensor because even the operation start at 350 degrees Celsius and we are using noble metal in that that is platinum and like that so the life is even much better than any other sensors because it is designed for that so absolutely no problem about the life about the durability, about the accuracy or the period of the vehicle of the life. Any other question please? Uh, no. In CNG vehicle, like there are two type of system basically. In cars, we call it by fuel vehicle means the car can operate either on petrol if petrol is not available either on CNG they cannot operate both at a time so for CNG spark plug remains same but we have to mount either the gas carburetor 
or we have to mount the gas injector in that separately and even gas ecu is also separately so in a car you have the ecu for the petrol injector you have the ecu for the we call it master slave ecu for the gas cng and we have the different type of injector which are used for the cng it is not the same injector ignition spark plugs are same and most of the sensors are also same to reduce the cost but in addition to that we are using gas temperature sensor and gas pressure sensor yes for lpg in household household lpg cylinders can turn completely is not suitable for bicycle ah uh, precisely it is not suitable but it can run you can run your car on lpg which is used for domestic purpose because it is a fuel but it will not give you the optimum life of your engine and optimum fuel economy because the purity of that gas is not up to the mark but engine will run your car will run emissions may not be very good life of the engine may not be very good the auto lpg which is also sold in the station that is meant for the cars that is good fuel it is filtered well because it has to go into the combustion chamber domestic lpg you have to just burn in the burner so there is no worry about the combustion but in a passenger car engines there are concern about the combustion however because lpg is a fuel so it can be used in the car also but that is not you know desirable and am is yeah yes please भारत मे यू रिपीट प्लीज ओके आई थिंक आई हैव शोन यू द स्लाइड ऑल्सो i can take you on that slide again in bharat stage 3 and 4 there is a change in the value of the co and hc and nox all are reduced maybe from 20 to 40% that i can show you exactly like hc is reduced almost half in bharat stage 3 it was 0.2 gram per kilometer whereas in bharat stage 4 it is 0.1 gram per kilometer co is reduced from 2.3 gram per kilometer to 1.0 gram per kilometer and nox is 0.15 to 0.08 it means you can say there is a more or less 50% reduction in the emissions between bharat stage 3 and 4 is it clear next question yes. next yes. Question. yeah thank you sir my pleasure Yes any question from any other center Excuse me I want to ask one question that with CNG better fuel efficiency is obtained but some bad effects are also observed on the engine so what are the major bad effects on the engine with CNG uses CNG uh, no doubt CNG in terms of kg because you are getting the cng in terms of kg so 1 kg of cng has the more calorific value than the 1 liter of petrol that is one thing if you 
take in terms of kg also in petrol then there is not the gap will reduce you know but still the cng has a better efficiency because of the higher calorific value and higher octane number now advantage is better fuel economy this advantage is if the engine is not designed properly the flame propagation the combustion of the cng is slow means if you burn the cng it will the combustion will be slow because of the characteristics of the cng the flame speed is slow i have shown you the graph of the flame speed the flame speed is slow it burns slowly petrol burn faster so what happened due to this cng engine the heat is more transferred to the engine in the combustion chamber and if the radiator is not designed properly engine may overheat which will reduce the life of the engine number 1 number 2 cng fuel is a dry fuel it is not a liquid fuel so when the petrol is injected in the engine it vaporizes it gives a cooling effect in the combustion chamber because engine is already running very hot so it will cool down that but cng is dry there is no lubricant in that and it is dry so engine cng is has a little bit dry operation lubrication lubricity is less so wear and tear of the cng engine is slightly more two now third point is when i am using the cng the temperature is because higher in the combustion chamber the engine valves piston rings they are designed to cater the petrol cng valves to cater the high temperature you have used two different alloying elements so if we take care of those things the engine durability can be also increased but anyway because the engine are basically designed for the petrol and the same engine is used for the cng application so it is never giving the optimum performance and optimum durability so you have to sacrifice around 10 to 15% life of the engine when you are running on the cng yes yes sir. any other question thank you sir okay yeah any question please that in the dii board i gave the fuel is injected through the nozzle in in the, in the dii board i gave the fuel is injected through the nozzle due to floating floating process that is while the temperature takes place of the charge Ne the reason how it affect the efficiency or performance of the engine. No, what you say in DI and in I, IDI? When fuel is injected through the nozzle or in the or injector due to floating floating process, certain falling temperature takes place of the charge. Mm -hmm. The reason how it affects the efficiency or performance of the engine. Actually, that when the fuel is injected. it is good because when it is injected it is injected into the combustion chamber there the temperature is more than 150 degree celsius engine is over heated or well heated so when i am injecting the fuel that droplet they absorb the heat they need the heat from the environment to vaporize so if the it is already heated environment the vaporization is good and it is even good for petrol engine also and in the diesel engine also it is even for the betterment of the performance basically this may have some problem only in the morning when the startability is there because at that time engine is cool so at that time it may be a concern and in some engine that's why we are using the heater so that it 
can warm the combustion chamber inside the air and it can vaporize the fuel easily. Otherwise, there is no adverse effect of this injection except in the cold starting. It improves the volumetric efficiency of the engine in case of petrol engine. It is better. There is no adverse effect of falling of the temperature. Any other question please? Okay, then you can continue to express a little bit some way around some 15 minutes. So now we will proceed little bit further. So I will just summarize you that we yes any question? No, may you repeat your question is not clear to me. Yeah, please. Uh, anybody understand the question? No, we are not able to understand your question. Please repeat it. Sir, while asking your question, please maintain little distance from my mic. So we are not able to understand your question. Please write your question in chat box so that we can read your question. No, sir, sir, just ask once again, we we'll try to uh, understand your question. Sir, there are is yeah is your is your uh, excuse me is your question is related to the coolant available in the market different coolants available in the market and what is the impact of those coolants on the engine performance is your question is like this yes sir yes sir okay Okay, the uh, I am sorry because that uh, uh, that uh, there was a significant disturbances in the voice. I was not able to hear, but uh, I just guess. I think if this is the your question, I would like to answer this questions. 
and uh, the answer is that uh, first we should understand why we use coolant we are using the coolant to increase the amount of heat the engine can carry from the combustion chamber and maintain the temperature of the engine in severe summer conditions and this is done because the boiling temperature of the water is 100 degrees celsius so i am adding certain amount of chemicals which enhance the boiling point of that coolant which is around 130 degrees celsius so that adding that chemical will not allow the water to boil because there is again a ratio between water and that cool that additives so that temperature may be around 130 degrees celsius so more heat can be carried out without boiling the water that is one purpose second purpose is water freezes at 0 degree celsius if i am in cold winter the water may frozen inside the vehicle to avoid that again that additive is added that cool in, into the water which reduce the freezing point of water and that make it around minus 30 degree celsius so up to minus 30 the coolant will not freeze and so the working the temperature range of the coolant has changed from 0 to minus 30 100 to plus 130 so that is the objective behind this now if there are different coolants available in the market i am not sure what will be their composition if they are not able to meet these characteristics then it will affect the performance of the engine especially in the summer and in the winter another thing we are adding anti rust also in that so that because water or that coolant is circulating all around the engines so there should not be any rust and any scaling in that passage of the water so that is also avoided so if it is not a standard coolant surely it will affect the performance and life of the engine so my suggestion is always go with the coolant which is recommended by the OEM. Okay. Is there one more question? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. How can you balance this equation to find out A is I think uh, uh, if you go to an SAE website, even this equation is sold and you can find out it is a very simple thing because you have to just balance. If you can balance CH4 plus oxygen like CO2 plus 2H2O, so we can balance this also. That is absolutely no problem. You have to find out some coefficient and it is it can be done easily. Even if you face any problem, go to the S. A E website with the Society of Automotive Engineers. They are some standard which calculate the which help you in calculating the air fuel ratio for any fuels. Equation is given and balancing is given. Even you can find out in any S A E handbook also. Okay. Any question please from any center?
so can we go little ahead okay now we have discussed a lot about the air fuel mixing rich lean stoichiometric no the fuel may be rich air fuel ratio may be lean air fuel ratio may be stoichiometric now when i am igniting that i need certain amount of energy to ignite that ignition energy is known as spark energy or ignition energy this is the energy which is given by the high voltage which is converted produced by the ignition coil and a spark plug now if you can see this graph if i have lambda or equivalence ratio 1 then ignition energy requirement is very low relatively if we are using the mixture lean again it is increasing if i am making it very rich again it is increasing so that's why somebody ask why the multi electrode spark plug so if i want to operate you know sometimes if i want to produce very high power this racing car they use rich mixture so they also require high energy in the system and the fuel economy improvement when you need there also you need high energy ignition system to burn that so oh, very important aspect i am not touching upon when to start injection when to start ignition so this is more a design aspect but i will superficially i will touch upon this injection i should start when the inlet valves after the inlet valve opening and spark i should start in during the compression stroke when the piston is at tdc just before that i should start the spark you can see here how uh, it is sort of a tdc point this one now if i am making you can see the lower curve in the upper graph this this curve here my ignition timing i have kept 10 degree before tdc so i am igniting i am spark creating the spark at 10 degree before top dead center so you see the power produced peak pressure produced is very low only this much only maybe 12 or 13 mega pascal and if i am making it 30 degree advance the cylinder pressure increases cylinder pressure increases means more power more torque and if i am making 50 degree advance you can see the pressure is increasing significantly so when if i want more power and more torque i have to advance the ignition timing but when i am advancing the ignition timing nox also increases so i have to balance both the things so that is called calibration i have to do it and this is the mbt you know what is mbt mbt minimum advance for best torque minimum advance for <coughs> best torque this is here so i will advance till i get the best torque best pickup best power 
so this is the strategy while optimizing the ignition timing and when to ignite it is done by the ecu and that is a strategy when to do how to do all this this is the control strategy that is done in the firmware just to give the background now i have shown you the this is called dli system dli means this is a distributorless ignition system earlier we have a distributor you see suppose there is a four cylinder engine so this is the distributor these are the so four leads 1 2 3 4 like you can see the four spark plug like 1 2 3 4 like so there was one ignition coil that was connected to the distributor and that distribute the ignition energy to the cylinder number 1 2 3 and 4 at appropriate time but the disadvantage of the system is it don't have the higher ignition energy so that's why this system is now obsolete why obsolete because they cannot their output voltage is around 10 to 15000 now we are using 30 to 40000 of volts and that was not possible with this system so this is uh, again different sensor so with this i think uh, exact 4 o'clock yeah so we have planned till 4 o'clock uh, and uh, today now in next few minutes i can summarize uh, we had discuss about the engine management system fundamental of the engines air fundamental requirement of the engine so we learned i just summarize we learned that air is more fundamental requirement like a human being engine is also you know uh, power torque fuel economy depend upon the air not on the only fuel it's the more air is the more fundamental then we understand about the composition of the air then air fuel ratio requirement different speed different load condition requirement different air fuel ratio if air is more it is lean if air is less it is rich and if it is chemically balanced it is stoichiometric and you can practice for the calculating the air fuel ratio for different fuels there are equations available for that it is simple mathematical equations of chemistry then we learn about the engine management system earlier we were using the carburetor why carburetor was obsolete because it was not able to provide the precise control of the fuel then the technology switched over to meet the bs2 bs3 bs4 emissions norm that is known as electronic fuel injection system and with the electronic fuel injection system it consists of air intake system then it consists of fuel system fuel pump fuel filter fuel injector then we talk about the sensors there are different sensor crank position sensor cam position sensor engine coolant temperature sensor inlet air temperature sensor manifold absolute pressure sensor and then we talk about the oxygen sensor then there are other sensor also like vehicle speed sensors and then that high end is you have the knock sensor you have the misfiring sensors and all that that we have not touch upon because they are little bit in the high end cars so this is the sensor then all the sensor principle of their working their importance their location has been discussed then all the sensor we try to demonstrate on the electronic fuel injection test bench we understand the uh, relationship between crank and cam speed the relationship between the crank angle and the cam angle the number of teeth the teeth profile play an important role even the gap between the sensor and the tooth wheel is a important generally we are keeping it around 0.8 mm to 1.2 mm if it is more then we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, get the appropriate strength of the signal and if it is too close then it may damage the tooth and in automobile application you can feel when the car is jumping and all that so this is very you know stability of this sensor integration is very important then we understand the what is the basic duration of injection then 
टेम्परेचर एयर टेम्परेचर कूल एंड टेम्परेचर एल्टीट्यूड कॉम्पनसेशन बिकॉज फ्यूल रिक्वायरमेंट चेंजेस एज पर द टेम्परेचर एंड एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर दैट कॉम्पनसेशन इज ऑल्सो कंसिडर इन टू दिस सो दैट इज अ करेक्शन फैक्टर विच वी आर इंटीग्रेटिंग देन वी लर्न अबाउट द इग्निशन सिस्टम वट टाइप ऑफ इग्निशन सिस्टम हाउ द स्पार्क प्लग गैप इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड देन वट टाइप ऑफ इग्निशन कॉल इज देयर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर लेस वट इज द रेंज ऑफ द सेकेंडरी वोल्टेज दैट वी लर्न एंड देन वी 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 अंडरस्टैंड दैट Uh, about some question about the cng and lpg cng is cng injection system we don't have the small nozzle and all that because atomization is not important there it is more important in the gasoline and all that so then we also learned that cng calorific value is much higher than the petrol that's why it gives the average but you have to redesign the engine to take care the heat balance and with this Uh, i think i thanks to all the participants for uh, uh, bearing the patience and in listening me and secondly i hope that uh, few questions uh, will be more in their minds which may be answered tomorrow if there is any questions and uh, otherwise also i will give my email address if any question is there later on the questions can be answered through emails also and uh, tomorrow uh, what uh, we will do we will start in the morning around i think uh, 9:30 so first uh, tomorrow i will touch upon some little bit uh, theoretical aspect of emissions combustion and emissions control technology and in the morning session only uh, first i would like to uh, give a demonstration of the emissions control technology like what we have given in the electronic fuel injection system so we will have the uh, technology display for that also tomorrow uh, that is a diesel particulate filter i will show you the what is diesel particulate filter what is the active regeneration system and how, what is the egr wall and how this mechanism controls and works so those will be the practical aspect of the tomorrow that i was planning actually so that we will do in the morning so we will focus so that when you will see the system and all that you may have more questions and you can learn much better so that we will try in the morning and if now if any question is there you may ask you may ask those questions i would like to answer those questions if there is no questions you please revise whatever has been learned today because uh, learn but listening one time will not solve the purpose it is the practice which you have to do and which you have to think upon and you have to inculcate in your uh, habits the learning habits because today the pace of the technology the is increasing that is most much more faster than the what we are being taught in the classrooms we are talking about now euro 5 and classrooms are even still teaching you know euro 2 or like that technology so there is a gap between 8 to 10 years between the teaching and between the industries so i can see that gap i am trying to bridge that gap being with maruti being with fpv germany being with iit delhi so i am able to visualize what is being even in iit i can compare with iit syllabus even iit are behind 5 to 6 years you know in the syllabus and all that um, for so there is a time to fill this gap but their faculties are more aware about the advancement and all that so without book they are able to give to their students what is going on latest but uh, most of the engineering college they go, go by the books knowledge so always it creates the gap between the uh, classroom teaching and the technology what industry is using so we are trying to bridge this gap and this is the electronic fuel injection system which we have displayed this is meant for training if any institute is willing to have this even they can take my address we will give the tomorrow our email address also so any lab any want like they it can be used we can uh, we can prepare for this type of test bench because we have given to iit we are talking to iit delhi with some other engineering college they like this idea even including some industry like honda and tvs motors they want this type of system because this make the clear fundamental you can do lot of experiments even you can do with this how you can calculate the engine speed because the, this wheel is rotating 
number of teeth are counted but what is the formula you are using to calculate the speed what is the formula you are using to start identify the start of injection what type of how you are detecting the tdc all these things you can learn by doing some experiments on this you can see the spark because it is actually actuator if you connect the fuel line injector you can see the spray also you can do everything on this test bench so if anybody is interested to have and to learn more so he is also always welcome and with this word i thanks all of you again and i thanks uh, nittri to give us the opportunity to interact with all, all of you and hope tomorrow session we will again come with the new concept on combustion and emissions control technology thanks by now if any question is there please let me know otherwise we can we can close the session Yeah, please. Hello. Yes. So thank you very much. Uh, the system is nice. Thank you very much. We are going to take it like that. Yes. So thank you very much. The uh, system is very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. we always put effort so that it is useful for you thank you for your feedback thank you sir